Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Alumni Field at Carroll Hutchins Stadium as Michigan softball opens their Big Ten season by welcoming in the Purdue Boilermakers. I'm Alex Miller alongside me, Emmett Gerstein. Really happy to be back at Carroll Hutchins Stadium. I, I was on the road a couple times with this team to Tampa earlier in the year, and I was in Louisville last weekend. Happy to be back at home. It's a lovely venue for some softball and excited. A little bit of a delayed start here. The anthem just played. It's 2.08 for what I believe was written up to be a 2 o'clock start. But this should be a fun one. The Wolverines sitting at 17 and 11 entering this one. Won six of their last eight, looking to keep the momentum going against Purdue. To quickly run you around the horn of this Michigan defense. Pretty familiar look if you've been following this team this season. Left to right in your outfield, Ellie Sealer, Janisa Conway, Ella Stevenson. Your middle infield duo, Ella McVeigh at short. Andy Langford joins her at the Keystone. Kiki Tholes playing first. Matty Erickson at the hot corner at third. Lauren Durkowski gets the start in the circle once again. And joining her in the battery is the redshirt freshman, Lily Valamont. Emmett, let's bring you in now, my good sir. This should be a fun one. Your first softball game for WCBN. Looking forward to getting this one underway with you. Yeah, I mean, first Durkowski in the circle, throwing a complete game, seven innings pitched, 89 pitches, on Tuesday against Oakland, leading the Wolverines to a 2-0 shutout. Uh, now she pitches in the Big Ten opener. Who else do the Wolverines want on the bump besides her? Durkowski is good as it gets in the circle. Brief pause here, the bullpen door, the away bullpen behind the left field door blew open. A Little bit windy here. So American flag out in center blowing hard into toward right field. So Durkowski digs in, in the circle. Leading off for the Boilermakers is Mariah Poehler. She'll be followed by Chloe Banks and Olivia Meeks. Here's Durkowski's first pitch of the day. In the zone for strike number one. First pitch at 2.09 on a chilly Saturday afternoon. 36 degrees according to the PA announcer, so not exactly softball weather. Yesterday's game got moved to Monday due to snow. There's still some snow resting on the dugouts. Here's the 0-1. Misses away, 1-1. One one. Yeah, Mariah Poehler, one of uh, the Boilermakers' first five hitters, all hitting over 300. If you're the Wolverines, you do not want her getting on base to start this game. 1-1 one one from Durkowski in there. Check swing from the slap hitter of Polar in the zone. Anyways, Dirk ahead one and two on the first batter in this one. But Polar, the freshman, wearing number 44. Indy Lankford wearing 44 across from her at second base. Here's the one two from Durkowski, fouled back. Valamont gave her pitcher a point. She liked that one from the Wolverine ace. But Polar, the freshman from Pearland, Texas. Having a really nice season so far to begin her Big Ten career, hitting 337 for the Boilermakers. Started every game. Here's another one two from Durkowski, skips it in. Two and two. Yeah, it was Durkowski's first off-speed pitch of the afternoon. Polar was on those first three fastballs. Looks like she wanted to switch it up there, but pitch a little low. Durkowski rocks, here's the two two pitch. Another off-speed, doesn't miss by much. A little bit low there, this count is full here. Polar doing a nice job to battle it back. Infield, outfield, both straight on on the slap hitter, Mariah Polar. Durkowski rocks. Here's the 3 2 pitch. That one is fouled off by Polar. Thought it might have gotten a piece of her off. Yeah, it looked bat. like she got a piece of something. Either could have been the catcher's glove, or if that was the case, Michigan would be catching a break here. But looked like she got a piece of something that wasn't the ball. But We'll do it over. Three and two, here's the ticker from Durkowski. And she walked her, missed outside. Lily Valamont held the glove out there for a couple extra seconds. The bark never came from the home plate umpire, Terry Holt. And Puller works a long count for a walk and the Boilermakers have a leadoff base runner to open this one. So nicely done there, the freshman with a tough at bat. And that'll bring up Chloe Banks, the sophomore. Here's the first pitch to her. Fouled back. Banks also in the left-handed box. 
And the sophomore also having a really nice season, hitting 364. Polar stands on first, 14 stolen bases to her season, some speed. Stands on first base. Maddie Erickson creeping in from third base. Kiki Thole as well on the other side. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Banks. That one in the zone. Our umpires in this one, Terry Holt behind the dish. Trina Comer for it at first. Bobby Martinez at third. Terry Holt at home plate has quite a long bark there on the strike calls. You really can hear that one up here in the press box. Here's the 0-2 to Banks. Fouled off. He stuck out the bat, got a piece. 0-2 again. Banks, another slap hitter for the Boilermakers. Janisa Conway, the Michigan center fielder, creeping into the left center field alley. Maddie Erickson, pretty shallow at third. Ella McVeigh, dead center of the, between the bases at short. This one's popped up to the infield. Kiki Thull calling it off in foul territory. She's got it. Banks is retired, one down. Mariah Poehler, the leadoff hitter, still aboard at first after her walk. It's a big out for the Wolverines. Durkowski, after battling a seven-pitch walk for the leadoff hitter, Poehler, gets Banks out on that two-strike count. And hopefully this can be the start of her groove here. Now it'll be Olivia Meeks, the first baseman today for the Boilermakers. Durkowski rocks, here's the first pitch to her. That one misses, 1-0. One oh. Meeks, the sophomore, sets up deep in the right-handed batter's box, her right foot back right on the chalk. Staggered stance, left foot out toward third base. Durkowski rocks, here's the 1-0 oh pitch. Swung on a miss, runner goes, throw is a little bit off the bag from Lily Valamont. Mariah Poehler picks up her 15th stolen base in the early goings of this season. And really, it's creeping up on you. We're nearly halfway through this season with Big Ten play getting underway, but still a formidable 15 stolen bases already for the freshman Polar. She's now at second, 1-1 one, one counter. Kowski rocks, here's the pitch. That one dropped in with the off speed, one and two now. A great pitch by Durkowski there. Meeks looked like she was completely expecting the fastball, but completely fooled, and Durkowski drops the off pitch right in the zone. Drakowski rocks, one and two coming. That one misses away. Valamont quickly out of the crouch to keep an eye on the runner, Polar at second. So now count moves to two and two. Polar taps the plate, spins the bat up, hands it around shoulder height. Drakowski right foot on the third base side of the rubber, left foot back, toe in the ground, heel in the air, rocks, here's the two-two pitch, off speed. Misses again, Valamont really kept the glove there for a little bit of a long time, but Terry Holt, the home plate umpire, didn't like it. So a full count now to Olivia Meeks. Zerkowski sets. Here's the 3-2 ticker. Upstairs and she chased it. Zerkowski blows it by Meeks and picks up a strikeout for out number two. Yeah, huge out for Zerkowski. Getting Meeks, probably the Boilermakers' second best hitter out, but that brings up Sage Scarmardo, who's hitting 424. She could be a threat right here. Runner on second, here's the first pitch to Scarmardo. Upstairs, nice job by Valamont to come out of the crouch quickly to corral it. Runner on second, the speedy puller, so a base hit to the outfield, almost certainly scores her. Two outs though, Wolverine defense, standard depth, just need the force at first to get out of this inning. Zerkowski sets, here's the 1-0 pitch. That one in the zone, fastball over the heart of the plate. Scarmardo watched it go by. One and one now. The cleanup hitter wearing number one, Sage Scarmardo. Left-handed box, staggered stance, foot comes toward the pitching circle as the pitch comes. Here's the one one. Took that one in there for a strike, one and two. Man, I cannot get over the bark Terry Holt's got going on behind home plate. You can hear him. And he holds that note for a long time on a strike call. One and two. Zerkowski checks the wristband. Right foot, third base side of the rubber. Sets. Rocks. Here's her one-two pitch. Popped up. Is it going to get out of play first base side? It will. Just over the netting. Yeah, huge secondary lead there by Mariah Poehler on second base. It almost looked like that she was running before Zerkowski got into her windup. She really wants to score on a single here. 
something to keep an eye on. If Polar takes off before the ball leaves Drakowski's hand, she'd be called out at second. Saw that a couple times in Louisville. One and two, here's the pitch from Drakowski. On the ground, McVeigh plays on a charge, throw on a first, easily in time, nicely done. By the Michigan shortstop, Ella McVeigh, as steady as they come there. Four up, three down in the top of the first for the Boilermakers. No score, 0-0 zero, zero, as we head to the bottom of the first inning. And that'll bring up this Michigan order, a familiar order for Michigan fans. Same order as Tuesday in this home opener against Oakland, a familiar order down in Louisville with one change, and that's Ava Costalis in a designated player over Aaron Haynes. She homered on Tuesday. So to recap at the lineup, Sealer leads off per usual. Indy Langford will follow her. Maddie Erickson, red hot, hits third. Lily, excuse me, Kiki Thole cleans up. Lily Valamont hits fifth. Janisa Conway, the freshman, has been on fire. She hits sixth. Ella Stevenson hits seventh. And there it is, Ava Costalis hits eighth, a bat I'm really high on, and Ella McVeigh will hit ninth. For the Purdue defense, left to right in the outfield, it's Polar, the leadoff hitter. In center, Kiara Dillon. In right field, it's the two hitter, Chloe Banks. And left to right in the infield, Sage Scarmardo at third. Tyrena Jones at short. Ashlyn Campbell joins her in the middle infield at second. At the cold corner, Olivia Meeks hit first, and behind the dish is Haley Hayes in the circle. Maddie Alish, the junior, gets the start for Purdue. Throw down to second from Hayes, a little high, but that means the Michigan order will get ready to dig in here. Elish, the starting pitcher, 38 frames of work so far this season, a 3-5-0 ERA, 12 appearances, seven of them starts, two complete games to her name. And she'll look to quiet the Michigan bats in the Big Ten opener. Bonnie Thole coaching third, Faith Canfield's coaching first for the Wolverines. And Ellie Sealer, the junior from Monroe, Michigan, will dig into the left-handed box for the Wolverines. Corner infield way in honor. That's Scarmardo at third. Meeks at first. Ellis checks the wristband. Now set. Right foot, third base side of the rubber. Hands go over the head. Here's the pitch. First pitch in there for a ball. 1-0. and oh. yeah, The home plate umpire, Terry Holt. Almost seems like he's got a small strike zone today. Both catchers now holding those pitches, looking for calls. 1-0, Sealer took a cut, fouled it off the end of her bat. One and one, this outfield playing her pretty shallow. Sealer, not a player that hits a ton of homers, but hits a lot of hard hit line drives and all three outfielders, Polar, Dillon, and Banks, playing pretty far in. The center fielder, Dillon, dead center of the Michigan block M out there in center field here at Carroll Hutchins. Here's the one-one pitch, Sealer, that ball is crushed to right field. No doubt about it. Sealer opens the game going yard into the grandstand in right. That's her first homer of the season. Ellie Sealer with a moonshot in the Big Ten opener. one nothing Wolverine. Yeah, talk about an announcer's jinx, Alex. You were just talking about how she had not hit a home run yet, but hard line drives, and there's both of them right there. Home run for Ellie Sealer, 1-0 Michigan. I mean, that got out of here in a hurry for Ellie Sealer. First homer of the year. She had two of them a year ago. And that's a good start for the Wolverines. And now Indy Lankford will dig in. Perhaps next time Sealer comes up, the outfield will offer her a little more respect. Corner infield way in on the slap cutter Lankford. First pitch to her low and in. Shortstop Jones comes to have a little talk with her third baseman, Scarmardo. Indiana Lankford, the sophomore from California, as quick as they come down the base paths. Here's the 1-0 pitch to her. Takes it in there for a strike. Ellis will try to settle down here after allowing the home run to Ellie Sealer. One to nothing, Michigan. Ellis will back on the rubber now. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Langford lets that one go by. Close pitch. Terry Holt, no call. Two and one. The outfield now playing deeper on Langford than they did on Sealer. 
Dillon, the center fielder, dead center on a slap hitter in Lankford. Fouls that one off, so a lot of room out there in left center field if Langford could just poke this one over this shallow infield on the left side. That's certainly what she's seeking here as she now faces a 2-2 count from Maddie Ellich. Yeah, with her speed, a little poke into left center field should be at least two bases for her. Ellish checks the wristband, 2-2, rocks, here's the pitch. Langford on the ground, played by the pitcher Ellish to the first base side, underhand scoop in time to get Indy Langford. Not much there, Langford didn't get a ton of that pitch. She's retired, one down now in the big bat of the sophomore Maddie Erickson. We'll dig in now for Michigan. Maddie Erickson, 349 to her name is the batting average early on in this season. Massive pop in this bat. Here's the first pitch to her. Big cut, high fly in the infield. Called off by the first baseman, Meeks. She's got it about three steps in front of her first base bat. So Erickson is retired. So after allowing the big bomb from Sealer to open the, the frame in the bottom of the first, Ellis quickly retires Langford and Erickson to bring up the senior Kiki Thole. And Thole, a player only hitting 205, but this is a bat. I mean, as good as there's been for the Wolverines the last couple years, 289 with double-digit homers a year ago. First pitch to her in the zone for a strike. And if Michigan wants to be a contender in the Big Ten, this is a bat that needs to get going for the Wolverines. Yeah, absolutely. We were talking about that before the game. 290 hitter last year. Her batting average just at 205 right now. First pitch to her, hard hit foul on the third base side. Oh and two. Two outs on the senior at first base today. We'll see her behind the dish a lot as the season goes on. Wide stance for the Michigan senior. Bends the knees as she awaits the pitch. Here's the 0-2. Let's that one go by, low and away, one and two. Kiki Thole, a very patient hitter. Six strikeouts is all on the season. Not a lot of swing and miss in this bat. Not a lot of chase either. Here's the one, two. Fouls that one off to the first base side. No play on it off the netting. We'll do it over at one and two. Purdue outfield playing Thole pretty far back. The corner outfielders pull her and banks a little bit tight to the first base side. A lot of room in left center and right center field if Thole could barrel one up there. She'll dig back in, taps the bat on the, twi on the plate twice, spins it up. Ellis checks the wristband. Rocks here's the one-two pitch to Kiki Thole. Fouled off again, third base side. Kiki Thole battling right now for Michigan. Yeah, you were right about no swing and missing this bat. Three great pick pitches there by Elish, but Thole manages to get a piece on all of them. Elish will wipe off the pitching rubber. Now will Retow it, right foot on the third base side of the rubber. Hands go over the head, here's the one, two. Low and away, ball number two. Kiki Thole has even now at two and two. Nobody aboard, bottom of the first inning. The Wolverines got to run across on an Ellie Sealer solo bomb to right field. And then the next two hitters retired. Now two, two, two outs to Kiki Thole, popped up to the left field side, coming in is Polar, makes a nice grab, coming in. Boy, she called off her shortstop, Jones. Might have been an easier play. That ball hung in the air for a long time, but Polar had to cover a lot of ground. She gets there on the dive. Yeah, Alex, you were just talking about how the left fielder, Polar, was playing fairly deep. That ball just dropping, not dropping, caught right behind the infield. Definitely should have been the infielder's ball, and maybe the wind was a factor on that one. As you mentioned, the flag blowing out into deep center field. That ball could have been much further in than Mariah Poehler, the left fielder, was expecting. But a great play, ne nevertheless. So we'll head to the top of the second inning. One to nothing Michigan, and Lauren Durkowski back in the circle for Michigan. I comment on this a lot. Maddie Erickson just threw a bullet down to Kiki Thole at first base from her warm-up spot. 
at third. The Purdue lineup in this one, we saw the top four, that's Polar, Olivia, excuse me, Mariah Polar, then Chloe Banks, Olivia Meeks, and then Sage Scarmardo. In this one, it'll be five, six, seven, due up. Ashlyn Campbell, the second baseman. Tyrena Jones, the shortstop. Haley Hayes, the catcher. And then eight, nine to follow, if need be, is Kylie Franks, and then Kiara Dillon. So Campbell, another freshman for this Purdue team. We'll dig in. Freshman from Alabama made her way up to the state of Indiana to play for Bur Purdue to begin her college career, hitting 358. A good start to her freshman campaign. She's in the left-handed box. Here's the first pitch to her from Durkowski. Misses away, ball number one. Yeah, Valmont holding that pitch again. Looked like she talked to the umpire whole after the pitch, wondering where that was. <laughs> Here's the 1-0 from Durkowski. Similar spot, same result, 2-0 now to Ashlyn Campbell. Durkowski looks into the dugout for the sign from Jennifer Brundage and Bonnie Thole. Now checks the wristband, sets. Here's her 2-0 pitch to Campbell. Off speed, that one missed low. Ashlyn Campbell ahead of Lauren Drakowski, 3-0. To begin the top of the second. If you're just joining us, I'm Alex Miller. Alongside me, Emmett Gerstein. Thank you for tuning in to WCBN Sports. In the Big Ten home opener for Michigan. Here's a 3-0 count to Ashlyn Campbell. And that one in the zone for Lauren Drakowski. Michigan up 1-0 in this one. Ellie Sealer ripped a home run in the right field in the in the bottom of the first inning to give Michigan a 1-0 lead. Durkowski sets, rocks, here's the 3-1 pitch. That one is fouled off over the netting on the third base side. A couple fans could have had a play on that ball, but elected to let it go over their heads. A little cold out here, might sting the hands a little bit. And Durkowski, after falling behind 3-0, is put it even at 3-2 to the freshman Ashlyn Campbell. Yeah, that pitch honestly looked a little up. Could have gotten bailed out by Campbell. Now the 3-2. Here's the 3-2 on the ground, right back to Durkowski on the backhand easy play on the first. Nicely done there by Lauren Durkowski to get an out out of a 3-0 count. And that'll bring up Tyrena Jones, the shortstop, a junior. Last year hit 315, batting average not quite there this year at 227. Here's the first pitch to her. In there for a strike from Lauren Durkowski. Durkowski rocks, here's the 0-1 pitch to Jones. Big swing and a miss that time, and Durkowski ahead 0-2. Tyrena Jones, the junior from Lake Worth, Florida, behind 0-2, infield, outfield, straight on. Durkowski rocks, here's the 0-2 pitch. Boy, that one, a ball just outside, and we've talked about Lily Vallum holding the glove up for a little while there. That's as long as she's held it all day, and Terry Holt never gave her the call, one and two. Lauren Durkowski has to paint the zone, one and two. High fly to shallow center. Ella McVeigh going back there. Call, she's called off by Janisa Conway. Nicely done by the freshman center fielder coming in on the charge. Almost popped out, but Conway over to snow cone it and held on. Yeah, there's that wind again blowing that ball that looked like should have been to the center fielder Conway. Easy in center. Blows in, caught just behind the infield. Again, could have been the infielder's ball, but a great play by Conway. So two down here. And Haley Hayes, the senior catcher, will dig into the right-handed batter's box. Wide stance, here's the first pitch to her from Drakowski. Upstairs, it's popped up. Valamont coming over to the first base side. Kiki Thole calls her off and makes the catch on the move. Six, seven, eight, go down, one, two, three, in the top of the second. Nice inning for Lauren Drakowski. And now the Michigan Bats will come up for the bottom of the second inning.
for Michigan. It'll be five, six, seven. The redshirt freshman, Lily Valamont, and then two true freshmen, Janisa Conway and Ella Stevenson. As the eight hitter comes up, that'll be another freshman in Ava Costalis, a young Michigan order this season. Two sophomores, a redshirt freshman, three freshmen to go along with the veterans, the, se the juniors, Sealer and McVeigh, and the senior, Kiki Thole. But these freshmen have been potent. Lily Valamont averages only at 2.30, but she's been walking a lot, some pop in this bat. She also started the season freezing cold. The bat has really warmed up over the last couple of weeks. Janisa Conway been on fire, leads the team with five homers. Conway's a really interesting player for Michigan. Leads the team in walks, also leads them in strikeouts, also leads them in home runs. So a lot of pop, a lot of time on base. Batting average a little bit lower than it should be, but it's up to 254, which is not too shabby in the freshman campaign, especially with everything else she's giving you with the power and good defense out in center field. Yeah, absolutely. Scored the first run for Michigan in that 2-0 shutout against Oakland on Tuesday, hitting a solo shot in the bottom of the second inning. <laughs> Lily Valamont, the red shirt freshman from Trenton, Michigan, will lead off the inning for the Michigan Wolverines. Here's the first pitch to her. Off speed, skipped in on a hop in front of home plate. Easy take there. Around the horn real quick for Purdue. Scarmardo at third, Jones at short, Campbell at second, Meeks at first. Outfield left to right, Polar, Dylan Banks. Behind the dish is Hayes. Here's the 1-0 pitch upstairs to Lily Valamont. Good amount of fans made their way to Carroll Hutchins today, especially considering it's about 36 out. There's snow on the ground. Field's been cleared off, of course. 2-0 pitch to Valamont, skips in low again. A chilly day, a lot of hats and gloves and winter jackets out in the grandstand in this one. 3-0 miss there, brings out a visit from Haley Hayes, the catcher. Yeah, I'd be very surprised to see Valmont swinging on this 3-0 pitch with the red hot Janisa Conway on deck and Maddie Elish struggling to find the zone early in this inning. Valmont during that mound visit, a quick chat with her third base coach and head coach, Bonnie Thull. We'll see if the take sign is on for Lily Valamont. Bit of a pause here. Terry Holt, who's home plate umpire, had walked over to the Purdue dugout. Now he gives the sign to Maddie Elish and puts his mask back on. 3-0 count, 1-0 Wolverines, no outs. Bottom of the second, here's the 3-0. That one in the zone for three and one now. Outfield straight on, infield straight on, pretty deep. Nobody aboard for the leadoff hitter, Valamont. So force out at first is all this Purdue defense needs. 3-1, hard hit on the ground toward the third base side. That's the Michigan dugout over there. I misspoke. Or no, excuse me, Purdue's no, on Purdue. the third base side. I'm so used to the home team being on the third base side. I forget that Michigan softball is on the first base side here. Carol Hutchins. Count is now 3-2 to Lily Valamont. Here's the full count pitch to her. Followed off again toward that Purdue dugout on the third base side. So we'll do it over at 3-2. and two. Valamont. Awaits a pitch in the right-handed batter's box. 3-2 count. Alish rocks here is the pitch. That one is low. Lily Valamont works a walk in. The Wolverines have a leadoff base runner in the bottom of the second inning. It's a huge leadoff base, base runner in the bottom of the second inning here. Janisa Conway, as we mentioned multiple times now, homered on Tuesday, leading the team in homers. Janisa Conway, the freshman from Olivehurst, California, will dig into the left-handed batter's box. First pitch to her, big swing and a miss. Great off speed there. Corner but infield for Purdue is in on her. Not a slap hitter either. Not a slap hitter at all. I mean, 
Michigan at times can go small ball. You could see Conway bunt to try to move Valamont to second, but and she does square around, pulls it back. Pitch was in the zone for a strike, 0-2. Oh Bonnie Thole and company not afraid to move, play small ball with nobody out. You've got Valamont at first. The bunt can move her to scoring position with only one out for Stevenson and Costala is due up behind Janisa Conway. Conway's behind 0-2. Here's the pitch to her. Upstairs and away for a 1-2 and two count. Conway will tap the bat of the plate now, put it up as it rests on the shoulder. Alish settles into the third base side of the rubber. Foul him on a board at first, nobody out. Bottom of the second inning. Rocks, here's the one-two pitch. Off speed, high fly to left, shallow left. Fowler coming in, she's got it with ease. Foul him on a retreat to first. One down here in the bottom of the second. And Ellis Stevenson, the Michigan right fielder, will dig in. with Valamont on first, Ava Costales due up behind her. Stevenson has struggled so far in her freshman campaign, started nearly every game for Michigan, 147 average, but a lot of optimism about this Michigan bat. First pitch to her is a strike. Bonnie Tholen company, very high on what Ellis Stevenson can bring offensively. Just hasn't been able to put it together so far in her freshman season. There's certainly been flashes, some pop in this bat, a lot of hard hit balls. Missed a homer to left field when I was calling the game out in Louisville by a couple feet. Takes a pitch there, low and inside. And getting her back going would be an extra piece to make this Michigan order just a little bit more potent. One and one count. Here's the pitch. Big cut, popped up toward the second base bag. The shortstop Jones makes the play. Called off for second baseman Campbell, and now two down. And the big power bat of Ava Costales will dig in now. Listen to me call this team before. You know I'm pretty high on this bat. Stallis went yard against Oakland on Tuesday. Their fourth start of the season, designated player in this one. Here's the first pitch to her. Took it outside. Stallis, 10 games, three starts, 14 at bat. She comes into this game hitting 357. And man, when this bat connects to a softball, it can oh, absolutely. keep on flying. Here's the 1-0-2-er, takes it outside, 2-0. Two good eyes there by Ava Castellas. Looked like she wanted to swing her back knee, twitched on both of those pitches, but held back. And now she's seeing a 2-0 count here from Alish. Haley Hayes, brief chat with the home plate umpire, Terry Holt. Now she's back in the crowd. Here's the 2-0 to Costales, fouled off and back. Two and one now to the freshman from St. Clair Shores, Michigan. A good swing there, just out in front. I think she got it off the knob a bit, fouling it over to the first base side. But a great swing, and she looks like she's on Alish right now. Two one count, two down. Runner on first is Valamont. Here's the two one pitch. Costalis, same knee turn you just talked about, Emmett, but check the swing again, and he's ahead three and one. Yeah, this is a great at bat here for Castellas. Bonnie Thull clapping over at third base. She loves it too. Let's see what Castellas can do now with the 3-1 count in her favor. 3-1, Alish, hands go over the head. Here's the pitch. Castellas lets it go by. She works a walk. That'll bring up Ella McVay, and then the top of the order do up to follow if need be for Michigan. We'll see if a pinch runner comes on for Costales. The Wolverines have done that at times, but perhaps with two outs, no need to burn a runner right now. So Costales will stay out there. Gets a tap on the back from Faith Canfield. So now Ella McVeigh will look to try to pass the baton. The junior shortstop awaits the pitch. Here it is. Takes the first pitch strike from Matty Ellis.
Freshman, a steady starter for Michigan at shortstop. Hitting 280, mostly in the nine hole for Michigan. Here's the 0-1 pitch to her, skips in low, one and one. Two aboard, two out, so a big half bat here in the bottom of the second. Michigan leads one to nothing after Ellie Sealer opened to the bottom of the first with a solo blast to right field. One one count, outfield shallow, infield playing tight. Force gets Ellis out of the inning, here's the one one. That one in the zone, one and two to Ella McVeigh. McVeigh shakes out the shoulders, now digs back into the left-handed batter's box, taps the bat twice on the plate. She squares around, does it off, and she'll pull back, of course, with the one-two. Here's the pullback, here's the one-two. On the ground, Chopper playing it back is Ellish, throwing a first in time. Maddie Ellish strands two and keeps this game where it is, one to nothing, Michigan, as we head now to the top of the third inning. With the top of the third, we'll get our first look at our broadcast cam in this one. I'm Alex Miller, alongside me, Emmett Gerstein, happy to be back here at Carroll Hutchins. We're in a bit of a weird spot in this booth, but we're making do here. Absolutely. First base side too. Not many rooms in this press box. But no, we normally do, we do make it work. Normally we're a little bit over, but the box is crowded today, so we're a little bit over from our normal spot. We're I'm exactly pretty much parallel with the base path from first to second. So if you just extended that up to the stands, you'd run into me. <laughs> but 1-0 Michigan, good start for the Wolverines. They had some base runners in that one, couldn't push them across. That's kind of been the story at times for this team this season. You get the solo blast from Sealers, a nice start. Yeah, I mean, you said exactly what I was about to say. This is what Michigan softball has been so far this season. Great pitching by your ace Turkowski in the circle, but runners on, good batting averages in the lineup, but just can't score these runners. I mean, the thing is, with Turkowski in this circle, for all you know, this might be all the run support she needs today to pick up a win. The Michigan pitching staff has been really excellent all season. Durkowski has been excellent. Aaron Hain, really excellent for the most part. Just got roughed up in one start against a really good Louisville Cardinals squad. And Jess LeBeau was started off the year really strong. It, in Louisville, appeared in one outing, threw five pitches all for balls and got pulled. Didn't look like herself. Hope she's not injured. She's a really good piece for Michigan. First pitch of this inning for a strike for Durkowski. Oh, not a strike. Not a strike. Looked pretty good. The one and 0 to Durkowski, but again, Jess LeBeau, I'm curious to see if she appears this weekend for Michigan. The senior really was the number two to Durkowski last year, and with Hayne, that's a really good three-headed monster if all three are healthy. 1-0 from Durkowski again for a ball. Lily Valamont again seemed to really like that spot, 2-0. I also really like that spot, Alex. Nothing wrong with that pitch, but Tori Holt wasn't having either of those. Holt, the home plate umpire, and me. Talked about a lot early in this one. 2-0 pitch, that one a clear ball up and away in the uh, up opposite batter's box. So now Kylie Franks, the freshman designated player ahead of, of Lauren Drakowski, 3-0. It'll be 8-9-1. Franks, Dillon, that's Kiera Dillon, the center fielder, and then the top of the order, Mariah Poehler. Here's the 3-0 pitch. That one right over the plate for Drakowski, 3-1. Michigan defense pretty far back on Franks. She's in the right-handed box. Here's the 3-1 from Durkowski. That one misses inside. And a walk worked by Franks. Lily Valamont will trot out toward the circle to have a chat with her junior ace Durkowski. And three of those pitches close on the inside part of the plate. All called balls by Terry Holt, the home plate umpire. Also of note, Lauren Drakowski's worked a lot of the time with, she's been drawing her starts with Kiki Thole in the battery and Hayne was getting starts with Lily Valamont in the battery today. It's, and it was the other day as well. Thole is at first, Valamont behind the dish, even with Lauren Drakowski in the circle. That'll bring up Kiera Dillon, the senior center fielder, hitting 305 in the nine hole for Purdue today. Runner on first, first pitch to Dillon. Misses for a ball, one and oh. 
Franks aboard at first. Franks only, it's her fourth start of the season. No stolen bases so far. 1-0 pitch to Dillon. Big swing and a miss. Almost fell out, fell off balance after that big chop. Did Dillon. One and one. Infield a little bit more in here on Kiara Dillon, the center fielder. Drukowski, third base side of the rubber. Rocks one and one, butt squared around. It's popped up, almost got over the netting behind home plate. Nevertheless, foul one and two. One nothing Michigan, top of the third inning. Kylie Franks, the eight hitter, walked and stands aboard at first. One and two count to the nine hitter. Yara Dillon, Durkowski sets, here's the one-two pitch. Fouled back by Dillon. Yeah, looking around the infield now, you see Indiana Langford had her hand in her back pocket. The shortstop, Ella McVeigh, blowing in her hand. It's definitely chilly out there. One-two, off speed. Close pitch, no bark from Terry Holt. Two and two, Durkowski, really nice off speed there. Dylan started that stride early, was out in front, didn't cut, but pitch was out of the zone. Two, two, fastball, runner up looking. Great composure by Durkowski there. Not a pitcher who walks a lot of players, but with these close calls from Terry Holt, Durkowski already walked Two and two innings, only 18 and 81 innings on the season. Keeps her composure and gets Dylan out there looking. That'll bring up the top of the order. Mariah Pola, the slap hitter, digs back in. First pitch to her, swung on and missed. Didn't try to slap that time, stood in and swung at it, missed it. The freshman walked to open up this game in the top of the first. She's got a runner aboard at first, that's Franks. She walked. Corner infield, little bit in. Here's the 0-1 pitch from Drakowski. That time a slap approach is fouled off the netting by Polar. 0-2. And, and you're right, nice note there. Indy Lang for the right, the th right throwing hand, going into that sort of warmer on her hip behind her back between pitches. Drakowski rocks 0-2 pitch. Off speed. Appeal down to first. The first base umpire, Trina Comerford, said she did not go around, and the pitch missed off speed. So one and two, but boy, Polar way out in front. Yeah, the definitely, off speed. definitely from here looked like she went, but that's a tough, a tough call for the umpire from the first base side. No umpire in softball at third base right now. One, two is taken for a ball outside, two and two. The third umpire, Bobby Martinez, is behind the second base bag with the runner on first and Kylie Franks. 2-2 two -two count. Zerkowski rocks, here's the pitch. Fouled off again by Franks. That one will get over the stands behind the first base side. Two and two. Janisa Conway, the center fielder, shifted toward left center on the slap hitting polar. Maddie Erickson and Kiki Thole both at around the first, the baselines for first and second and second and third. Coming in as Drakowski winds up. Here's the 2-2. Fouled off again. Polar putting up a fight here. She had a really long at bat for a walk to open up this game. And once again, hanging tough with Lauren Drakowski. Top of the third, 2-2 two -two count. One out, runner aboard at first is Franks. Freshman on first, freshman at the disc. Dish for a young Purdue team. 2-2 pitch, off speed, out in front. It's grounded, just foul, third base side. Maddie Erickson fired it down to Kiki Thole just for funsies, but ball clearly foul and called as such by Terry Holt behind home plate. We'll do it over, 2-2 two two once again. It looked exactly like what Mariah Poehler was trying to do there. If that ball was fair, it would have been a tough play for Erickson at third. Here's another 2-2 from Drakowski on the ground, foul on the first base side and an inside pitch. Polar really doing a nice job putting bat to ball right now to stay alive against Lauren Drakowski. 
Terry Holt, the home plate umpire, took a brief voyage toward the Michigan dugout to pocket an extra softball in case it comes of need. 2-2, two -two, we'll do it again. Runner on first is Franks. One out, top of the third. Drakowski rocks, here's the 2-2. Two -two. A hitter. And that one hit her, but what's the call? She will take first base. It looked like Franks was coming toward home plate, and they'll return her. I think that's the right call. Kiki Thole at first was signaling at the first base um umpire, Trina Comerford was signaling at two. It seemed like the slap hitter, Poehler, while coming toward that pitch, came a little bit over home plate, and they'll bring her back. That brings out a visit from the Purdue head coach, Maggie Frizzotti, and she'll exchange some words with Terry Holt. Holt seems, excuse me, Brizzotti seems to be saying to Holt that how can your first base umpire makes the call on that as she pointed down there when you, Holt, are right behind the dish seeing if this pitch was over the plate or not. But nevertheless, and now I believe, well, we'll wait and let them sort this one out. Rizzotti had retreated to her dugout. Now she's back out there, a little more animated. Looks like they've called the hitter Polar out. And she's retreating to her dugout. So we'll see how this gets scored. I mean, she was leaning over home plate when the ball hit her. That could arguably be strike three. And batter interference, perhaps. Rizzotti still out there. The first year Purdue manager not happy right now. Rizzotti's first year as the Purdue head coach, pri previous two years an assistant under Boo de Oliveira, the looks previous like head stands. coach. It looks like that call will stand. They'll rule it a strikeout swinging for Polar in the stat sheet. So maybe the bat came across as she got hit on the slap hit. Her first pitch. To Chloe Banks, misses for a ball. Valamont came up quickly to keep an eye on the runner at first. Kylie Frank, so a little bit of chaos. Finally sorted out, 1-0 and oh now. Runner on first, two outs. To Chloe Banks. Joukowsky rocks 1-0 pitch. Swung on and missed. A little bit of a weak swing there by Banks. Sort of just stuck the bat out there trying to knock it foul, but didn't get anything of the ball there. Yeah, some aggressive leads after these pitches from Kylie Franks, the only Purdue runner who has not attempted a stolen base this season. Let's see if she does here in a one-run game. Pitch was high. Once again, Franks stunted after the pitch was released. Valamont quickly out of the crouch, and no action doing between the first and second base base pass. 2-1 two count, two outs. Runner on first. Durkowski rocks. Here's the pitch. Up and away for a ball, three and one. The Michigan flag out there in center now is more blowing in toward home plate. And we've seen a couple fly balls sort of get knocked down by the wind. Flag now a little bit toward right field. Three and one. Dirkowski rocks. Here's the pitch. Misses and walked. Banks and a couple boo birds ring down here from the Michigan faithful at Carol Hutchins. And been a tight zone today for Terry Holt. So now two aboard, two outs. The baton is passed to the three hitter, Olivia Meeks, the sophomore. And this bat's been potent so far in this season for Purdue. Two aboard, two outs. Zerkowski just needs one to clean up this inning. Big cut on the first pitch, fouled back by Meeks. The center fielder Conway and the right fielder Stevenson pretty far back now. Sealer and left takes a couple strides back. All straight on, infield deep. They just need the fourth. Drakowski, right foot, third base side of the rubber, left foot back, toe in the ground, heel in the air, rocks off speed, misses away. One and one. Runner on second is Franks. Runner on first is Banks. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch to Olivia Meeks. Big cut, fouled it back, was underneath it again. 
one and two, but uh, Meeks is Meeks is taking some big cuts up there. Oh, absolutely, yeah. These balls are going fast into the netting behind home plate. If she straightens that out, that could be scary for the Wolverines. One, two pitch. Drakowski rocks, here's the one, two. Swung on and missed, got her to chase it away. Lauren Drakowski keeps this game with a one to nothing Michigan lead by drawing a chase from Olivia Meeks. Lauren Durkowski so good in every situation. Runners on, nobody aboard. Just so hard to hit. And a big strikeout to keep this shutout going. Yeah, a lot of base runners in this game for there only being one run and one hit. But good pitching with runners on for both sides. So we'll head to the bottom of the third inning. Still just one to nothing, Michigan. That one run was the solo blast from Ellie Sealer in the bottom of the first. The Michigan leadoff hitter got every stitch of that softball and deposited into the grandstand in right field. And she's due up to lead off this inning. Top of the order coming up for Michigan and they'll look to jumpstart this offense once, once again. It's Ellie Sealer. Indiana Lankford and Maddie Erickson do up. There's a giant glove catch out in right field with a young fan, a giant glove trying to catch some balls and uh, That's now over and the Michigan order will get ready to rumble here in the bottom of the third. Terry Holt, the home plate umpire, dusts off. Home plate, it's gleaming now and Ellie Sealer will dig back into the right-handed batter's box, excuse me, the left-handed batter's box. Last time she entered between those lines of chalk, she crushed one. Here's the first pitch to Sealer. Takes it for a ball low and in and this corner infield is in on Ellie Sealer. Really interesting. Sealer is not a slap hitter, and she's not really someone to try to bunt for a base hit. She typically bunts to move a runner, leads off this inning. Here's the 1 0 pitch. She did square around there, pulled it back, let it go by for a ball low. So perhaps the Purdue Boilermakers know something I don't. 2 0. Surprised now, though, to still see them in with a very favorable count for Sealer, especially after hitting a ball 250 feet in her first at bat. Takes the 2-0 off speed for a strike, two and one. Let's see the leadoff hitter, that was only her fifth RBI of the season on that solo shot. 2-1 count from Maddie Ellis, here's the pitch. That one low, Ellie Sealer ahead three and one. Indiana Langford awaits. Purdue black jerseys, tan trim for Michigan. The all whites at home. Here's the 3-1. That's lined into right. That's got a chance to go and it's gone as well. How about that? Ellie Sealer. That wasn't really even much of a full swing but just a line drive to right that kept on carrying. And how about that for Sealer? Two times at the dish, two solo shots to right field, and Ellie Sealer single-handedly has Michigan up two to nothing. Yeah, looking at the flag, just as you were telling, saying how last inning it was blowing in, looking at it now, blowing out again. And you're right, Ellie Sealer with that not full swing, still managing, maybe with the help of the wind too, to poke that over the right field fence. And courtesy of her, twice Michigan is up two now. No matter if that ball got out or not, that was an excellent piece of hitting, excuse me, by Sealer. Just made it over the wall. Would have otherwise been a, at least two, maybe three bags for Sealer. But a solo shot. Umpire is having a chat with Bonnie Thole. Not sure what they're talking about here. 
Perhaps something with the score of the lineup card. Now Terry Holt heads over to the Purdue side. But two to nothing Michigan, Ellie Sealer. Hot start for Michigan in the beginning of their Big Ten season. Indiana Lankford will settle in now. Orange ribbon in her hair this afternoon. And the speedy two hitter will dig in. But boy, Ellie Sealer, only two homers all the last season, none coming into today, and she's got two through three innings. First pitch to Lankford, low and inside for a ball. Indiana Lankford. Hitting 254 on base percentage, a whole 99 points ahead of her batting average. Walks a fair bit. Here's the 102 er Let's it go by for a strike, one and one. The slap hitter, batting average sits at 254. A year ago, all Big Ten second team hit 329. She'd like to see the average climb and keeps a lot of balls in play, doesn't strike out much. Here's the 1 1 to Andy Langford. On the ground, back up the pitcher. And she bobbled it, but played it off with a bare hand and gets it to first in time. That's the second time Langford can be scored as a 1-3 put out. Two ground balls to the pitcher. So now one out, and Maddie Erickson will dig in. The sophomore from Wilsonville, Oregon. Dangerous bat. In the hands of number seven in the maize and blue. First pitch to her is ripped into left center. Whoa, that came off hard. She'll round first. Throw comes in from center, is up off the bag. Erickson into second with a slide. There's a double. My, oh, my, that ball was hit hard by Erickson. Yeah, wow. First off the bat, I thought that was going to be right at the shortstop Jones. But it was hit way too hard and just floats right over her head. And nearly after going right over the head of the shortstop, I think two or three hop the fence in left center field. Wow, that ball was smoked. So Erickson aboard at second. Heck of a sophomore season so far for Maddie Erickson. She's become a key cog in the three hole for Michigan. One out now, runner on second. Tiki Thole digs in. Here's the first pitch to her. Low, skipped over home plate. Nice stop behind the dish by Haley Hayes. Yeah, Kiki Thole, the bat we've been talking about. Needing to step up after a huge last season. There wouldn't be a better time than in this Big Ten opener with a runner on, th on second with Durkowski on the, in the circle. Three runs could be a lot for her. 1-0, grounded weakly to third. Easy play for Scarmardo. Throw is right on the money. Scarmardo at third, didn't have to move. Hit right to her a couple strides in front of the third base bag pretty weakly. Thole is retired. And now Lily Valamont's will dig in, two outs. If the Wolverines want to plate another run beyond just the Sealer solo shot in this inning of the two Sealer solo shots today, Lily Valamont has to deliver for Michigan. Runner on second is Erickson, two outs, two to nothing Michigan. Here's the first pitch to Valamont, off speed, dropped it on in there for a strike. Ellis, right foot back on the third base side of the rubber. Checks her wristband. The righty, rocks, hands go over the head. Here's the 0-1, big swing and a miss, but Valamont missed it. 0-2 falls the redshirt freshman. Valamont will settle back in. Wide stance, bent knees. Here's the 0-2, lets it go by, low and away for a ball one and two. Valamont, redshirt freshman, missed all of last season due to injuries. Been an everyday starter for Michigan in her redshirt freshman campaign. Here's the one-two pitch to her. That ball is rocketed to left center. One hop into, two hop into the wall. Erickson around to score. Valamont in easily at second. That's an RBI double. Lily Valamont needed to, del to deliver with two outs, and she did. Three to nothing, Wolverines. Thought Valamont was thinking about three there. Coming into second hard but then just sliding in. But a lot of energy and emotion after that one. That's a big hit for her. Much needed for the Wolverines. 
That's one of those slides where it's more for effect than anything. Valamont was into second easily. So back to back, ripped line drives into left center field alleys that get to the wall for Erickson and Valamont. And the Wolverines are up three to nothing. Sealer with a solo shot in the first. Sealer with another solo shot to lead off this inning, the bottom of the third. And then the Erickson double, and she's knocked in by the double by Valamont. Visit at the pitcher's mound here now for Maddie Ellish. She will still keep the ball for the Boilermakers. And now Janisa Conway will look to extend this lead for Michigan. 3-0 Wolverines with Lily Valamont aboard at second base. Conway is able to reach. Fellow freshman Ellis Stevenson awaits in the on deck circle behind her. Ellis will look to settle down here. Two outs and try to strand this runner at Valamont. Something to hang her hat on. Here's the, o the first pitch to, to Conway. Excuse me, I'm all out of sorts there. Meant to say Visor, not hat. Meant to say Valamont, not Conway, but. Or Conway, not Valamont. Valamont aboard at second. Conway in the left-handed batter's box. Maddie Ellish in the circle. 0-1 now to Conway after following that pitch off. Here's the 0-1 pitch to her. In there for a strike. Conway falls behind 0-2. I believe she fell behind 0-2 in her last at bat, which ended with a fly out. Yeah, also last at bat. Ellish sticking with those inside off-speed pitches and those fastballs outside, trying to prevent the power hitter from doing some damage. 0-2, missed away to make it 1-2. and two. Outfield playing deep against Janisa Conway, particularly the right fielder, Banks. 1-2, here's the pitch. Off speed on the ground, charging is the second baseman Campbell. Easy play, throw is in time to get Conway. Michigan gets two across on the solo home run and the back-to-back -back doubles. And they lead it three to nothing as we head to the top of the fourth inning. Yeah, great inning for Michigan there. Can't really ask for a better one right now on this cold day, low scoring game. Dierkowski in the circle. The Wolverines have to be confident, th feeling good in this one. With only nine or 12 outs, is this the top of the fourth? 12 outs to go. Top of the fourth. So Lauren Dierkowski will dig back in through a complete game shutout on Tuesday against the Oakland University Golden Grizzlies. She'll look to do the same here against the Purdue Boilermakers. Similar colors digging into the batter's box against Durkowski. So far, similar results. Thanks for tuning in to WCBN Sports' coverage of Michigan softball. We'll be covering this team all season long, as we always do. We've been on the road a couple times. We're going on the road a couple more times. I'm going down to Bloomington next week. We've got a crew going to Evanston a couple weeks after. Another update for those who might be keeping an eye, the Michigan women's basketball team playing their first round matchup in the NCAA tournament right now. Wolverines up 41-37 on the Kansas Jayhawks with six left to play in the third quarter. Would love to see that team pull out a win and then they'll face the number one seed in their region, the USC Trojans. But here from Carol Hutchins, three to nothing, Michigan. Lauren Durkowski back in the circle against the heart of the Purdue order, 4-5-6. Scarmardo, the sophomore, will lead it off. It's 4-18. First pitch to her, a fastball in there for a strike from Lauren Durkowski. Scarmardo, 4-18, really been hitting well in her sophomore campaign. Staggered stance, here's the 0-1. High fly to left center on the charge is Conway not gonna get there on the shallow fly. They've got her at second though. Ella McVeigh oh. came out, 
played it off Conway's glove, threw it in, the ball got to Indy Langford long before the runner Scramardo did, but they'll call her safe and say Langford missed the tag. It did look like she was trying to swim around that tag from Langford. I don't know if she did the throw beater by a, a lot. Look at the replay on the Jumbotron now. Really close play, and I think they're gonna take a look at this on the headset. So this one will go to review. There's review now here at Carroll Hutchins. It's directly to our right. It's part of why we're a little bit displaced in this one. And for moments like this, it's certainly a helpful commodity to have access to. So three to nothing, Wolverines. Lily <laughs> Valamont went to the dugout to grab a jacket to keep her pitcher Lauren Durkowski warm. So Dirk will wrap on the jacket to try to stay warm during this brief intermission. So Scarmardo had a shallow fly to left center. Conway on the dive, couldn't get there. It bounced off her glove. It was a heads up play by Ella McVeigh, the shortstop to keep going back. And she played it off of Conway's glove, got it in time. And the ball beat Scarmardo by a mile. We'll see a replay. She tried a swim move, but it looks on the replay that Langford might have gotten her, but man, it's close. And we right. don't really have a super close view. Yeah, right now it looks like the Boilermaker dugout is liking that replay a lot more than the Wolverine dugout. Looks like this call might stand here. So we will see what happens. And nobody out. Scarmardo, the leadoff hitter. She'll either have a double or she'll have been thrown out at second trying to snag an extra base. Still getting looked at. Valamont and Durkowski gathered at the circle. McVeigh and Erickson around shortstop. Thole and Lankford between first and second. And the outfield chatting as well. And we'll see what call is made. Umpires come out and they'll award her second base. Scarmardo is safe. A nice swim move. Because boy, the ball beat her by a couple strides. And Dove in head first, was able to dodge the glove of Indiana Langford. So nicely done by Scarmardo. She picks up a double and with nobody out, the Boilermakers have a runner in scoring position for Ashlyn Campbell, the freshman five hitter. Rukowski rocks, here's the pitch. Fastball in the zone, taken for strike number one. Campbell grounded out her first time up. We'll look for better here. Corner infield in. Campbell could try to bunt to move the runner to second. Here's the pitch. Upstairs, 1-1 one, one count. Maddie Erickson at third. A couple strides in. Now timeout requested. Looks like a pitch runner might be coming in. Looks like it. So yes, here comes a runner. Scarmardo will head to second. The runner coming on. Can't see a number. I believe 14, that's Pearson George. Senior outfielder from Ohio. 10 games this season, two of them starts. Got two stolen bases to her name. Last year, George, a regular player for this squad, 46 starts, hit 206, walked a ton. She's running at second now. Here's the 1-1 to Campbell. Blooper to shallow center. Conway was well positioned in shallow left center and makes the easy play. A nice defensive arrangement there on Campbell and she's retired. Yeah, talk about scouting. As Soon as I saw that ball off the bat, I thought it was dropping into center for sure. But looking at the outfield, Conway right there not too far behind the infield. Makes the routine fly ball. Tyrena Jones now will dig in. First pitch to her is popped up high to left field. Conway calls it off in left center. She makes the catch. Throw to the cutoff player McVeigh. Got by her, but was enough to threaten the runner in second to George, who retreated back to second. So nicely done on back to back plays by Janisa Conway in center. So now. It was the leadoff double, but then two quick outs. 
And now if Purdue wants to scratch something across, they need their senior catcher, Haley Hayes, to deliver. Here's the first pitch to Hayes, off speed, misses for a ball. Hayes, the senior from Indianapolis, only hitting 143 at the moment. Last year only hit 154. Before that, spent two years at Boise State. Some pop in this bat, two homers to her name this season. Here's the 1-0 from Drakowski to her. Upstairs, 2-0. Pinch runner George stands aboard at second. Scarmardo was who doubled there. We'll see if she stays in the game. 2-0 to Haley Hayes. Drakowski rocks, here's the pitch. Misses up and away. And now behind 3-0 falls Lauren Drakowski. Drakowski retoes the rubber. 3-0 count. Rocks, here's the pitch. Misses low and away, a four pitch walk for Hayes. Haley Hayes aboard and that brings up the freshman, Kylie Franks, the designated player. So two aboard, two outs. Drakowski just needs one out to strand these two runners. Franks walked her first time up. First pitch to her this time. Fastball in the zone. Strike one. Zerkowski will roll up the sleeves of the undershirt under her jersey on this chilly Saturday afternoon. Now sets back on the rubber. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Up and away. Valamont quickly out of the crouch. Pump fakes to keep an eye on George at second. Kirsten George, the pinch runner, after the double by Scarmardo, and then a walk from Haley Hayes as the two runners on with two outs here in the top of the fourth. Three to nothing, Michigan, tying run effectively at the plate in Franks. Here's the 1-1 one -one from Drakowski. That ball is hit high and deep to center. Maybe the wind knocked it down a little, but Conway is there for Michigan. Looked good off the bat, but not enough carry. Conway makes the play, and... Nicely done by Lauren Durkowski. Yeah, again, huge for Durkowski, stranding two, two innings in a row now, especially after walking the seven hitter, Haley Hayes, only hitting 146, walking around four pitches. Not exactly what you want to see, but does a great job getting Kylie Franks to end this inning. Nothing, Michigan, bottom of the fourth inning. Three nothing, Michigan, seven, eight, nine, due up for the Wolverines. Ellis Stevenson, Ava Costalis, Ella McVeigh is the bottom of the order, looks to start off this inning for Michigan. Three to nothing, Wolverines. Two solo shots by Ellie Sealer. And then Maddie Erickson had a double where she got knocked in by Lily Valamont with a double of her own. Three to nothing Wolverines, bottom of the fourth. Chilly afternoon here on Saturday. There's some snow on top of both dugouts that hasn't melted, hasn't come close really to fully melting. There's less of it on the Purdue side than there is on the Michigan side. Maddie Ellis still in the circle. Sage Scarmardo will stay in the game after being pinched run for. She's back at the hot corner at third. Here's the first pitch to Ella Stevenson. Off speed, misses away to Ella Stevenson. The freshman from Algonac, Michigan. Looking to get it going. Ella checks the wristband, rocks. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Hard hit, but foul on the third base side. That's the kind of ball you'd love to see land fair for Ella Stevenson. Good cut, nevertheless. Yeah, Bonnie Thole clapping over there at third base. 
She likes what she sees from Stevenson, starting her in 25 of 26 games that she's played, only hitting 145. Here's the 1-1 to Ella Stevenson. Skips in low for a ball, two and one. Ava Costalis will follow. It's a young Michigan order. I've said it a couple times, but a young order, and these freshmen have played big roles for Michigan and will continue to do so for any success Michigan has this season. Here's the 2-1 to Stevenson. Hard hit on the ground. That's through between short and third. A base hit for Ella Stevenson. Split the third baseman, Scarmardo and Jones, and she's aboard with a leadoff single. Yeah, we were talking about that foul ball, third base side. Love to see that fair. Virtually the same hit, just about 10 or 20 feet to the right. Gets through the six hole, and a leadoff base hit for Ellis Stevenson. Hit the ball hard, good things happen, and it works out for Ellis Stevenson that time. Hard hit grounder made its way to the outfield for a base hit. Eva Costalis will dig in now. Replacing Stevenson in the right-handed batter's box. Here's the first pitch to Costalis. Off speed, nicely done there to drop it in by Ellish. Costalis started shifting her weight early and didn't swing, but the movement was out in front. Yeah, Ellish liking to start these power hitters off with those off-speed pitches. Expecting fastball, wanting to do damage. Costalis and Conway earlier. 0-1 misses away, 1-1. One 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 count, Stevenson aboard at first after the single. Costalish awaits the one one pitch. There it is for a ball away, two and one. Ellis settles back into the third base side of the rubber. Left foot back, hands go over the head. Here's the two one, Costalis chased a pitch low and away and missed it, two and two. Probably a good thing she did miss it because if it was in play, it wasn't going anywhere far. Yeah, Bonnie Thole talking to her after that pitch. I think she said that she's trying to do too much. Just needs to shorten up, drive a line drive into center. Two, two, here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Costalis was ahead two, one and missed on two pitches and goes down whiffing. That's Ellish's first strikeout of the afternoon. So one down here with a runner on first in Stevenson and Ella McVeigh now will dig in. McVeigh shows bunt, does so often, pulls it back, here's the pitch, slapped, fouled it off her own ankle. Good thing she was still in the batter's box when that hit her ankle. Close to being out of it, if that hit her ankle, when she was not in the batter's box, she would have been called out. Stevens, Stevenson aboard at first. Ella McVeigh, the junior from Iowa, at the dish. Here's the 0-1 pitch to her. Squared around a bunt pull, the back pitch was low. One and one. One one count to Ellis Stevenson. Here's the pitch. Slap to third. Played by Scarmardo. They try to get the lead runner at second. Stevenson and they do. Heads up play to nail down the lead runner by Scarmardo. Yeah, it was a great play by Ashlyn Campbell there over at second base. On the previous pitch, um, excuse me, when this when McVeigh squared to bunt on the previous pitch. The second baseman, Campbell, was coming over to first. But on that one, she read that the bunt was going over to the third base and got to second in time to get the runner, Stevenson. And we'll see a new pitcher here for the Boilermakers with, Ella, with Ellie Seeler approaching. And Seeler, two for two with the two solo shots. She's seeing Ellis really well. And that'll be the end of Maddie Ellis's day. She'll leave with three and two-thirds pitched. Three earned runs to her name on five hits, two walks, one strikeout. Replacing her 
is Julia Gassett. The Ohio native. Struggled so far this season. A 9-2-6 CRA over 23 and a third pitch. She'll look to change her fate here against the Michigan Wolverine order. And with two outs, runner on first, in Ella McVeigh after she reached there on a fielder's choice. You know, I've got a very different ERA on my notes than on the stat sheet, stats broadcast link. So, stats broadcast says Gassette has a 403 ERA, and that would make a lot more sense for this righty arm. We can confirm that that's right. A 403 ERA. for Gassette, 48.2 innings pitched, four and five on the season. It's the first pitch to Sealer. Just checking again. I Purdue website led me astray, but nevertheless, <laughs> a 403, a much more formidable number for Gassette. 1 0 to Sealer now. Takes it for a ball, 2 0. Ella McVeigh with some speed aboard at first with two outs. Sealer 2 for 2 with two home runs to right field. She'll try to keep her day going. Yeah, you see our five fans in right field, too. Alert now after getting the first two. Wanting a third now. The set requests times and is, gets it from Terry Holt, the home plate umpire. Now she'll step back on the rubber. Third base side, works the right. Here's the 2-0 on the ground, and it's through. The shortstop Jones started going to second to cover on McVeigh, who had started to run and had to dive back to her original spot and couldn't get there as the ball skirted past her on the ground, oh. a base hit. Nearly textbook executed hit and run. McVeigh and Sealer pointing at each other now, both on the same page, and a great team play for the Wolverines. And really, that's what made that work. If McVeigh's not running on that, that's a routine ground out for Jones at short. But instead, the inning continues with two aboard, Indiana Langford. We'll dig in. Number 44, Indiana Langford digs in against number 33, Julia Gossett. And Indy Langford looks to keep this rally going. Here's the first pitch to her. Slapped foul on the third base side. Bonnie Thole tried to knock it down with her shoe. Couldn't get it. Yeah, Alex, as a slap hitter, what do you think Indy's approach here? What do you think she's trying to do with the ball? Clearly trying to control it to the third base side there. Romardo's tight. You might have room on the ground up the middle, room on the ground between short and third. Here's the 0-1. She lays down a bunt. It's foul. Langford with two aboard trying to bunt for a base hit. That was about the spot for it. Just rolled foul. She's behind 0-2, so that might be the end of the bunting for this expedition at the dish for Langford, but gets a low pitch and try to slice it in the air into shallow left field. Fuller to the left fielder playing shallow. The center fielder, Dillon, not over at all on Langford. Pitches upstairs, one and two. Very interesting, you rarely don't, I mean, it's rare to see a center fielder play Langford straight up. Typically, they come over deep toward the left center field alley, but Dillon is straight on in the middle of the Michigan block M. Here's the one two to Langford. Gets a piece of it, just stuck the bat out there and knocked it foul. It rolled into the Purdue dugout on the first base on the third base side, excuse me. So we'll do it over one and two. Langford 0 for two in this one. Both ground outs back to the pitcher at the time, Matty Ellish. Looking for something different against the arm out of the pen, Julia Gossett. 
She'll tow the rubber now. Sets one, two, two aboard. Here's the pitch to Langford. Same thing. Just stuck the bat out, knocked it foul toward the third base side. Langford waiting for something she likes, but again, this is not a bat that chases much, not a bat that swings and misses much. We'll do it over. Here's another one-two pitch. Langford swinging bunt, played it third, not in time. Oh, Langford, that's her game. Flew down the line, Scarmardo on the charge, couldn't get her. Indy Langford works the base hit. That's what she brings. Speed can kill, and Indy Langford aboard at first. Yeah, wow, I don't know if Scarmardo could have been playing any shallower than that. <laughs> Two hops into her glove. But Indy Langford beats it by a step at least. Man, she's fun. So now the bases are loaded and the big bat of Maddie Erickson digs in. Here's the first pitch to Erickson. Takes it inside, pops out of the catcher Hayes' glove. No movement though from McVeigh at third. And all three runners aboard right now run very well for Michigan. McVeigh at third, Sealer at second, and the speedster at first, Langford. Yeah, if Erickson does what she did last at bat, you would have to think that's scoring three here. 1-0. Rocks, here's the pitch. That one low, 2-0. and oh. So Maddie Erickson has a hitter's count, and Gossett, of course, has to be careful. Two outs, but with the bases loaded, a walk brings home a run. 2-0, -oh. outfield straight on, infield straight on, and deep. They just need a force at any bag to strand these three runners. 3-0 -oh, Michigan. The set rocks, here's the 2-0. And Erickson, a shallow pop. It's played on a slide by the first baseman, Meeks. Boy, Gossett in the circle seemed to lose it, but her first baseman helps her out. So nicely done out of the pen. Allowed a couple base runners, but the Boilermakers are able to strand three Michigan runners and keep this game in a much more reasonable deficit at three to nothing Michigan as we head to the top of the fifth inning. We're gonna make a little bit of a switcheroo here for these final three innings. I've convinced Emmett to give play-by-play -play a shot here as we've got a 3-0 ball game. So we'll do that here for these final three innings. So three nothing Michigan and I'll move to try to give some analysis here on color. I talk too much anyways. <laughs> no, you were great, Alex. Oh, thank As you. always. Oh yeah, uh-huh. Watching the infield warm up now. Maddie Erickson with that cannon from third that you love to talk about. I mean, it's just the way Erickson's able to pop it into the glove of Thole at first is just something special. I was talking about this earlier. As we saw they were the, the Michigan squad was playing some hacky sack before the game, but in Louisville they were doing that along with throwing a football. And watching <laughs> Erickson throw some dots, some tight spirals was, was I mean, there's, there's a cannon attached to that right arm of Matty Erickson. Yeah, I saw them playing some soccer juggling before the game, too. What can't she do? Got to stay loose. Yeah. Durkowski in the circle now. Dylan at bat for the Boilermakers. 0 for 1 on the day. Durkowski rocks and the pitch just down. Dylan the senior. Her average dropping from 305 to 300 in this one. The 01, excuse me, 10. Bunts just foul. Count 1 1 to Dylan now. Still a chilly one here in Ann Arbor. All the infielders, hands in the back pocket, warming up. Don't want the ball with a cold hand. Empty bases, the 1-1 one, one to Dylan, just inside. Looked close, but Valamont not holding the glove nearly as much as she has earlier in the game on close calls. I mean, the most impressive thing with this cold weather is Jerkowski staying warm out there, and she's been as good as it gets in this one. 2-1 to Dylan, just high. The weather definitely affecting Jerkowski today. Four walks in four innings 
after I mentioned earlier, only 18 and 81 before this game. Yeah, if you had to knock her performance, that's the one knock, but she's done such a nice job on damage control in this one that when Purdue has gotten runners aboard, obviously nothing's come across, and Drukowski has really done a nice job limiting hard contact. Only one hit today. 11 straight shutout innings for Durkowski in the past two games. The 3-1 is just high, and her fifth walk of the day for Dillon. Dillon checked the swing, and close enough that Michigan was able to appeal down to first, but they'll say she didn't go around, so. Another walk issued by Durkowski. Pretty uncharacteristic for the Michigan ace, but again, nobody out here, but with just that runner on, not wanting to walk, the nine hitter, bringing up the leadoff hitter, Polar, the OO is popped up to center field. Conway calling off Sealer, makes the play, one down. Denisa Conway's had a fair bit of action out there in center and she's handled it all with ease and nicely done again on the charge that time. Yeah, nearly perfect game for Janisa Conway besides the one that she just misjudged where it looked like McVeigh might have thrown out the runner trying to stretch it to two. Here's Chloe Banks now. First pitch, grounded foul down the first baseline. The runner on first base, Dylan, trying to stretch it to three if it was fair. That one was close. Kiki Thole was playing pretty tight to the first base bag. I'm might have had a play on that if it was fair, but if not, that would have been extra bases down the line for Banks had it been on the other side of the foul line. Banks 0 for 1 today, but still a threat, hitting 358 with 11 RBIs this season. Durkowski rocks, the 0 1, just low. The runner goes, no throw for Valamont. And Dillon with her ninth stolen base on the year in only 10 attempts. She's fast. I mean, it looks like Valamont turned the glove over there to try to stop that low pitch and just sort of muffed the exchange to her throwing hand and led to the easy steal for the speedster, Dylan. The one, one to Banks. Bunted straight to Durkowski. Easy play. Dylan gets to third. Two down. It's an interesting decision there by Purdue. Obviously you move the runner to third with that bunt and now a base hit most certainly scores Dillon but you also chop yourself down and out when you already had one on the board so now Olivia Meeks has to walk or reach base in some form with a hit to keep this inning going and try to plate that run. It is, only, it is a three run game too. Purdue looking like they're playing for one run right now. The 0-0 oh -oh to Olivia Meeks is just down. 1-0. And you also give Durkowski daylight to get out of this inning. Just needs, I mean, just needs to get Meeks and gets out of this inning scot-free. Durkowski's 86th pitch of the day. Fouled off 1-1. One, one. Yeah, that's nothing for Durkowski. She'll, she'll work as long as this game goes. The 89 pitch complete game shutout wow, on Tuesday. Wow, that's efficient. I didn't realize it was so few. Yeah, against Oakland. Pushing that number now, but still plenty left in the tank. Dylan on third. The 1-1 one -one to Meeks. It's in there. Strike two. Valamont holds that one and does get the call this time from the home plate umpire, Terry Holt. How big would this be if Durkowski can strand another runner on third? Already stranding a total of four the past two innings. The rock in the pitch, just high. Valamont wanted that call. Terry Holt's been hearing it from both dugouts from the fans, and umpiring's a hard job. No matter what call you make, someone's not going to like you. But it is a tough job, and he's keeping it consistent. That one's been tight today, though. It has been tight. The two-two from Durkowski, swing and a miss. Emotion showed from Valamont, gives her a big fist bump on the mound. In the circle, excuse me. And Durkowski greeting her teammates off. And she'll be the first one, excuse me, the second one to walk back into the dugout besides Valamont, 
who's due up this inning. Got to take the equipment off. But, man, really nicely done by Darkowski again. And that's sort of why I question that decision, decision by Purdue to bunch the runner over to third because then Darkowski strikes out Meeks, and that's that for the inning. But Yeah, only one hit for the Boilermakers today through five innings. Basically haven't been able to touch Drakowski in this one. Looks like they might have been playing for one run in each of the three innings, but that's risky when you're facing an ace like Drakowski that the Wolverines are lucky to have. Drakowski's just as good as it gets. I mean, it's just a pleasure to watch her in the circle. Game in and game out for this Michigan squad. And I'm really curious to see who Michigan throws the rest of this series. They've got a game tomorrow, and then Friday's game was moved to Monday. I'd imagine Aaron Hain will get a start. We'll see what the deal is with Jessica LeBeau. Hope to see her pitch as well. If Durkowski can pitch a couple more innings in this one, that would put her top seven in innings pitched in college baseball, in college softball, excuse me. Following Jessica Mullins from Texas State, having thrown 104.1 innings in 20 appearances this year. <laughs> Let's see Kiki Thole get something going here. The OO -oh popped up deep. This could be gone and caught at the wall. Warning track power for Kiki Thole. I mean, that's a really good caught from Kiki Thole. And that wall out there is 200. And that was 199 from Kiki Thole. But really nice cut. That's the kind of swings that Michigan fans have grown so accustomed to from seeing from her over the last couple seasons. And I'm really not worried about her bat getting going. You know that bat is so experienced. It's been so good the last couple of years. And Kiki Thole will get it going for Michigan. Here's Lily Valamont. Takes the first pitch outside. 1-0. That at bat dropping. Gassette's ERA in the threes now. Down to 3.97. The 1 0 to Valmont. Looked good, but inside. Terry Holt still keeping that zone consistently small. Nobody on for the Wolverines. 3 0 game in the bottom of the fifth. The 2 0. Also close. Held by the catcher Hayes, but no call for Holt. 3 0. They're patient at bat for Valamont. Looking at her head coach, Bonnie Thole over at third base. If she was going to give her the green light or not, let's see. The 3-0. Strike one. Right in there. That was take sign. Valamont didn't really even consider that pitch, it seemed. Back yeah. came off the shoulder. Absolutely. Down early. And it was a good one. The Wolverines out hitting the Boilermakers 7-1 to in this one. Gassette steps in the circle, rocks and pitches. Smoked into the left center gap. One hops the wall, she's thinking two. Left fielder, Polar hits the deck, and a stand-up double for Valamont. How about that day for Lily Valamont? That's the second time she's roped a double into that left center field gap, and really swinging the stick well, and that's a really good sign for Michigan. Another really good bat that's starting to heat up as of, over these last couple weeks. And she'll get pinched run for by Lexi Delamonica. Delamonica, the freshman. Delamonica, the freshman from Queen Creek, Arizona. Her and Maddie Ramey have really been the two go-to pinch runners for Michigan throughout this season. Bringing up Janisa Conway. Again, the infield playing in on her. I, I don't really, I mean, with one out, maybe Michigan does the same thing Purdue did last inning in bunts, but. The uh oh is down to Conway. Delamonica on second base for the Wolverines. One out in the bottom of the fifth, and Hayes walks out to the mound to talk to Gassette. But it is really interesting to me that Purdue has consistently played non slap hitting lefties like Conway and Sealer with the corner infield so far in. Bit of an unusual approach to those two bats. 
And also unusual that against a slap hitter like Langford, they've kept their center fielder Dillon dead center with no shift toward left center. A bit of an unorthodox defensive setup against the Wolverines by the Boilermakers in this one. Five home runs and 20 RBIs in 28 games for Janisa Conway. The 1-0 just misses. 2-0. Delamonica warming up her hands here at second. I've mentioned the weather so many times today, but it is a huge factor. The wind, the sun, the temperature. A lot of strategy going into this game today. This cassette steps back in the circle, delivers and fouled off. Huge secondary for Delamonica on second base. Huge cut there at the dish from Conway. He's a free swinger, and that can be a really good thing, and it has been this year with the five homers, but a bit of swing and miss from time to time. Leads the team in strikeouts, but there's been so many positives on the other end with leads the team in walks, leads the team with homers, and it's a really good freshman bat for Michigan. 2-1 to Conway. That's in there. Good pitch for Gassett. With that previous hack from Conway on the 2-0 pitch, definitely thinking about putting the dagger into this game. Three-run lead should be plenty for Durkowski already. The 2-2 is floated. Deep right field. If it's fair, it's gone. And it's called foul by the home plate umpire, Holt. I mean, <laughs> that was a moonshot. I couldn't even see where that ball landed. It landed in that snow pile out there. <laughs> My goodness, Conway crushed that pitch. Seeing that snow pile looking over there for the first time today, that might have come from the field yesterday. And boy, that if was you, close. That's a tough call behind the dish. Your home plate umpire is staring down that line, and that ball just had so much air under it that, boy, that's a tough call. And, now Conway has to settle back in here. The 2-2, swing and a miss. What a change of tale of two pitches, if you will. Yeah, wow. Two outs now for the Wolverines. Delamonica still on second. Bringing up Ellis Stevenson, who smoked a ball through the six hole her last at bat. Ellis Stevenson, a bat that Alex, we've been talking about, is there. The freshman just hasn't shown yet as the 1-0 Excuse me, the OO is taken high and inside. Yeah, but I, I really do think this is a bat that can get going for Michigan. She's had some really good at-bats where she's fought. She's been patient, hits the ball hard when she connects. A lot of reasons for optimism with Stevenson. 1-0, two outs. Stevenson takes strike one. Purdue infield wanting to get out of there. Needing three runs in two innings to tie it. Bottom of the fifth here, the 1-1. One, one. Looked good, but called low by Holt. Good frame by Hayes, but no call. Not good enough. Delamonica really looking to score on a single here. Running on contact with two outs. The 2-1 to Stevenson is in there. That big bark from Holt behind the plate. Calling strike two on Ellis Stevenson. Two, two, two outs now. Big pitch coming up here. Just down, full count. It's a really good take by Stevenson. It's a tough pitch to hit, fastball low. And nicely done to not chase it. And now full count, interesting decision to see where Gossett goes with this. Gossett not wanting to bring up the power hitter Castellas. The 3-2 is fouled off her knee in the box. We'll do it again. Delamonica was nearly to third base by the time that ball was hit. She really wants to score that fourth run of the game for the Wolverines. One run in the first, two runs in the third. Two of those thanks to solo shots by Ellie Seeler. The third on back-to-back -back doubles by Maddie Erickson and Lily Valamont. The 3-2 is taken for ball four. Great at-bat for Ellis Stevenson. Putting her on the empty first base and making it first and second for Michigan with two outs. 
for Ava Castellas, and I'll hand this over to you, Alex. Well, I mean, you, you said it there, really nice at bat for Stevenson. Worked it full, was patient, had a couple of close pitches she didn't chase, and it's really good stuff. And now let's see if Costales can drive these two in. First pitch of the at bat, taken at the knees for strike one. Great pitch there by Gassette to get ahead after that walk. Costales last time up, chased back-to-back -back pitches en route to a strikeout, and we'll see if she can find something to hit here. The 0-1 from Gassette. Another good pitch at the knees. Costales not liking the call. Bonnie Thole not liking the call over at third base either. But she still believes in her freshman designated player. The 0-2 looked like the same spot, but not. <laughs> Taken down, one and two to Costales. Two outs, first and second for the Wolverines. Stallis in her stance. Gassette rocks and pitches and popped up foul. More like a line drive. That ball was smoked foul. Pitch was upstairs and Costales did a really nice job to get bat to ball on that. And that's a pitch when a lot of players swing at it up and in. And that's down one two. That's the third strike. But nicely done by Costales. He gets ball. The next one two is smoked into left center field. That's down. Della Monica rounding third. Stevenson rounding, now held up by Bonnie Thole. Or maybe not held up, but she stayed herself. Looked like Bonnie Thole wanted her to go. That's but nevertheless, a, a one-run double for Ava Castales and a 4-0 lead for the Wolverines. I'm not sure who held up who there at third, but it's a miss either way because the ball popped out of the shortstop's glove. That's Tyrena Jones. and. Popped out of her glove as she would have had to try to fire it at home. And after having to re-pick it up, she would have never gotten Stevenson. So unfortunate there, but nicely done by Costales to drive in a run there. I'm nearly loving this bat as much as you now, Alex. <laughs> Second and third for Michigan. Ella McVeigh now takes strike one. I just think Costales, limited opportunities, has delivered when she's gotten the chance. And She's going to keep getting chances, and deservedly so, for this Michigan team. Gassette not wanting to put Ella McVeigh on first base now with Ellie Sealer. Three for three on deck with two solo shots. The 0-1 taken down. Ball one. 1-1, one, one, two outs. Ella Stevenson on third. Ava Castales on second after driving in Della Monica to put the Wolverines up four. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Blooped into left, that's down. Stevenson scores easy. Castales to third. McVeigh now gets to second. The Boilermakers not paying attention. Great base running by McVeigh. That was excellent base running by McVeigh. They were keeping an eye on Costales. Were a little too at ease on that, and McVeigh was keeping an eye on it the whole time. And I was just about to say that it's been such a weird day for Ella McVeigh because she's come up in a bunch of spots with runners on. Only has one RBI coming this game all season. And now just drove in her second run of the season with that blooper. Just enough mustard on it to drop it into left field. Not surprised now to see a mound meeting for the Boilermakers. For now, it looks like it will still be Gassette in the circle. But Ellie Sealer, not the player the Boilermakers want to face right now. She's three for three. Solo shot in the first, solo shot in the third, and a single to left in the fourth. Michigan now out hitting the Boilermakers 10 to one in this one. If you're just joining us, second and third for the Wolverines. Bottom of the fifth, already two scored this inning. 5-0 game. Leadoff hitter Ellie Sealer stepping up to the plate after this minor pause. I mean, it's really somewhat interesting that Costales is still running. I mean, obviously there's two outs, but you have runners to burn with Janella Lacqua still on your bench and Avery Fantucci on your bench. And, of course, the go-to pinch runner, Matty Ramey, still on your bench. We're going to get a pitching change here. I think it's a good time to update you that Michigan women's squad basketball 12 seconds left, we're up 67-64, and Kansas somehow just knocked down a three. So that's down to the wire. In men's March Madness news, Arizona knocking off Dayton. 
the first team in the Sweet 16 in the men's tournament. The Jayhawk men up 22 to 18 on the Bulldogs from Gonzaga. I would just really love for this Michigan women's team to pick up a tournament win. and They were in control this whole game, won the first three quarters, and have lost this fourth quarter. They're losing it right now, 23 to 14. They'll get a chance, though, with 12 seconds after a timeout. But, boy, that's – hope they can pull it out either way. But, nevertheless, we've got a game here. The reason South for the long pause. South, what? Excuse me. I was saying the reason for the long pause now is that we do have a new pitcher. It's Olivia Caney. You're right, the first southpaw we've seen today. 3-5 ERA. Over 14 innings pitched this season. But they'll bring on a lefty and she'll face a lefty and sealer and a lefty due up in Indiana Langford. I'm a big baseball guy, Alex, and I'm wondering now, how, how does the lefty-lefty matchup affect a softball player as much as a baseball player? I think I'm not a perfect expert for that question, and Sydney Cyprian, a member of WCBN, plays club softball. I think she'd be a better person to ask. And, um, but I do think it can help. Slight breaking pitches will move away as opposed to in toward a hitter. That seems like a general thing you'd want, just the same as it is in baseball, but... A lot of threes on the scoreboard here. The three for three, Ellie Sealer, 333 average. Takes the first pitch of the at bat down and away for ball one. Sealer's just had a really nice day so far. I mean, two homers pretty much tell that story, but big chance here with these two runners in scoring position, two outs to drive a couple more in for Michigan. McVeigh on second, Casales at third. The 1 0 from Caney's just down. 2-0. Ellie Sealer probably couldn't be feeling any more confident right now. Already with three barrels today. Hitters count 2-0 to her. Is down for 3-0. Now I'm wondering if she'll see the green light with how her bat's been today. She might. It's also possible Caney's staying away from her with the open base on third. And maybe you'd rather deal with well, it looks like Avery Fantucci in the on-deck circle will take cuts instead of Andy Langford. The 3-0 is also down. Not much harm done for Purdue. I like that decision. Sealer's been red hot career and season long. She's a much stronger hitter than Fantucci. I wonder if you go to Fantucci to get a righty bat in this order. and We'll see Fantucci, the sophomore Atlanta, Georgia. We'll get us a chance here in a big spot. Yeah, Bonnie Thold deferring to a hitter with maybe some more power than the slap hitter Langford. Wanting to do some damage with the bases loaded. Five runs already looking like more than plenty for Durkowski. We'll see if she takes the circle in the top of the sixth inning. We've seen a good chunk of Fantucci this season, especially on defense. But good chance for her to hit here. The uh oh bounces in front of the plate. Ball one. Caney yet to throw a strike since she, since she took the circle five pitches ago. Fantucci getting into her stance. The 1 0. Off speed in for a strike. Great pitch there by Caney. There's that first strike you were talking about for the southpaw Caney, but again, this is a good spot for Fantucci. Bases loaded, two outs, and you're up 5-0. You're not really sweating these runs, but be a good sign for Michigan. The 1-1 is also down. 2-1 now to Fantucci. Wolverines five for nine with two outs today, four for nine with runners in scoring position. Alex, this is what they're gonna need to do if they want to win games in the Big Ten season. No doubt. The 2-1 to Fantucci. Her. Hits her on the elbow, and that'll score Castalis. Everyone moves up. I mean, that's a pretty easy take there. The off-speed came in. That one's not going to hurt you too bad. And Nicely done by Fantucci to stay in the batter's box and take the hit by pitch. 
Sealer moves over to second. McVeigh over to the third. Fantucci staying on first base. And it looks like we might have another pitching change here for the Boilermakers. Caney. Quick day. Very quick day. Only an eight pitch day. A walk and a hit by pitch. Maddie Ellish back in the circle. You don't see that every day. I guess she's had time to settle down, but she comes in with the bases loaded, two outs to try to get an out here in the bottom of the fifth. If you're just joining us, Maddie Ellish already pitched 3.2 innings and started this game. Five hits, three earned runs, over 70 pitches. Gave up those two solo shots to Ellie Sealer in the first and third inning, respectively. And back-to-back -back doubles for Matty Erickson and Lily Valamont in the third to score that third run. Three runs here in this fifth inning for the Wolverines. And a sixth spot. Out hitting the Boilermakers 10 to one. Purdue your sight here with Matty Erickson bases loaded. Matty Erickson hitting 348. One for three today with that double that I just mentioned. Absolutely smoked over the shortstop's head. Four home runs on the season. The 0-0 from Alish. High and out. The Wolverines have to be already feeling pretty good about this one, but more runs can never hurt. Alish rocks, and the pitch, 1-0. Swung, ground ball, third base. Scarmardo over to first, easy out for Meeks. Three-run inning for the Wolverines. And they strand three more. And we go in to the top of the sixth. Only six, six more outs. As Durkowski takes the, mount, the circle again. Ninety pitches for Durkowski today. Chop liver. <laughs> Twelve scoreless in the past two games for her. Only one hit allowed. Five walks, which is unusual, but has stranded five in the past three innings, including a runner on third last inning. I mean, Durkowski is just so good, and it's Michigan is lucky to, these last couple of years, had such good pitching, and Durkowski's been a big part of that. And that can continue to be the strength of this team this year with that three-headed monster of Durkowski, Hain, and hopefully Jessica LeBeau's Going to be back to her usual self shortly. Looks like Indiana Langford is back at second base after being pinch hit for by Avery Fantucci. Fantucci, after pinch hitting, gets hit by a pitch, scoring that fifth run. Excuse me, sixth run. Sage Scarmardo, the lefty, steps up to the plate. The assist on the third out in the bottom of the fifth, leading off in the top of the sixth, takes ball one outside. 1-0. One oh. Scarmardo, the cleanup hitter for the Boilermakers, still yet to hit her first home run of the year. That 1-0 oh hits her in the elbow as well. She hobbles over to first, but she should be fine. Walking it off a bit. Might have gotten her in a tough spot. Yeah, got plunked, but from Drakowski's perspective, it's not the worst hitter to allow a board. And Smart is a hitter that can do damage for Purdue, and you effectively walk her there. And then with Campbell, really the last of this dangerous top five in this Purdue order due up. You can deal with the runner on first in Scarmardo. 
Kiki Thole playing in at first base. Retreats back after ball one. Valamont looking to throw over to first, but no throw. Durkowski checking the wristband, looking for the call from the bench. Campbell way back in the batter's box. The 1-0 also high and in. 2-0 now. Nicely done by Valamont to get out of the crouch quickly to get up for that pitch because with the runner on first is Scarmardo. If that gets by, that moves her up to scoring position. McVeigh came in from shortstop to say a word to Durkowski after that one. But Durkowski back in the circle and delivers a strike on the 2-0. 2-1 now to Ashlyn Campbell. Runner on first, nobody out. Purdue still looking for their second hit of the game. The 2-1 is down. 3-1 now to Campbell. Campbell hitting 375 with runners on this year. The 3 1 popped into left field. Sealer tries to dive and make the catch in foul territory, but it's just out of reach. 3 and 2. Nice hustle by Ellie Sealer there, but that would have been a tough, tough play on the charge. She's playing in really shallow on the left field line with Conway also shallow on the slap hitting Campbell. Yeah, both outfielders significantly in left field. That 3-2 is high, and Durkowski walks Ashlyn Campbell to bring up Tyrena Jones now, the junior shortstop. And this could be it for Durkowski. No, I don't think so. It's just... Jennifer Brundage, the pitching coach, can have a chat. And I've noticed this team doesn't like to go away from Drakowski and her starts if they can, especially with how good she's been with runners on in this one. And yeah, peeking over at the Wolverine bullpen, no action. <laughs> all I see is snow. That's all I see over there, too. Yeah, a lot of snow in that pen. So maybe perhaps. I don't think Michigan the bullpen wants Durkowski out either. The bullpen's sitting on a Lauren Durkowski complete game, and obviously the shutout so far, and she's been very effective with runners on. And now you get this six, seven, eight that has struggled this season, has struggled today, and Durkowski can try to strand these two. Durkowski's first pitch is in there for a strike. Huge to get on top to Jones. As you just mentioned, the six, seven, eight, nine, zero for five today for the Boilermakers. Campbell on first, Scarmardo on second. The 0-1 just misses. Waiting for that late, late strike call from the home plate umpire, Terry Holt, but none there. Both Scarmardo and Campbell run well for Purdue, so ball in play could be dangerous. Straight up defense on this 1-1 is bunted. If it stays fair, it's a hit. And Valamont touches it just foul. Good play by the catcher there. Boy, that was almost a beauty that just sat there on the chalk but just spun foul for Tyrena Jones. That bunt maybe got only 10 or 15 feet up the first base line. But if it stayed fair right on the line, which it was until the very end, it would have been an easy hit and bases loaded for the Boilermakers. Yet it's still first and second. One, two, no outs. The pitch is grounded just right of Maddie Erickson and a base hit into left field. Scarmardo held at third. And base is loaded now for the Boilermakers. It's a tough play there on the dive for Maddie Erickson. Erickson at third has got a really good arm. She probably doesn't have the most range of other players we've seen out there. Avery Fantucci's had some really nice plays at times with the hot corner with how quick she can be off of a batted ball, but that one just by Erickson, but bases loaded, and Drakowski's got to try to quiet these bats. The umpire, Terry Holt, talking with the Purdue bench for a bit. Now the Michigan bench looks like we might have a little substitution. Don't see quite where, but I'm the umpire sure and. Either. I didn't see a pinch runner come on. 
Not really sure what Bonnie Thull was looking for there. Yeah, here's Haley Hayes, the senior catcher. 0 for 1 today. Bases loaded, nobody out. Durkowski's pitch is in there for a strike. Way to get on top. Jones with only the Boilermakers' second hit of this chilly Saturday afternoon at Carroll Hutchins Stadium in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The 0-1 to Haley Hayes is fouled back, 0-2. Hayes jogging that one out to first. Even I though know, it looks like... Very clearly out of play. <laughs> directly behind home plate. Stepping back in the box, taking a practice swing. Oh and two. Big pitch for Durkowski. She rocks. Popped up. Just foul on the right field side. That'll get into that snowy Michigan pen. Ellis Stevenson hanging close to that line, now looking at the Michigan bench to see if her coach Bonnie Thole still wants her over there. Looks like she's playing a, a little more straight up than where that ball was. Here's the 0-2 to Hayes. Good take just outside. It's a good pitch, though, for Durkowski. Ahead 0-2, you put one that's close but a little bit off, and Hayes, stone cold take there. Scarmarter on third, Campbell at second, Jones at first. The one, two, strike three looking. Durkowski retires Haley Hayes. A huge first out for the Wolverines here in the top of the sixth. It's a really good off speed pitch from Durkowski in a good spot. Hayes was sitting fastball, and Dirk slowed it down, and Hayes was out in front. One down, got to get two more here. Durkowski right back in the circle, the 0-0, just high. Thought she was starting to quick pitch a little after getting that strikeout. Her sixth of the day in 5.1 innings. 108th pitch of the day for Durkowski. He's on the way. And it's in there for a strike, 1-1 one one to Kylie Franks. Kylie Franks, only her 12th at bat of the season right now. She's two for 10 coming into today. The one one just misses from Durkowski. Gives a little nod to Valamont after the, after the pitch. I think that was the spot she wanted, just couldn't quite get the call. Bases loaded for the Boilermakers. The 2-1 from Durkowski fouled off. 2-2. Two two. Boilermakers putting some pressure on the Wolverines for pretty much the first time today in the sixth inning. It's a big pitch here with the 2-2. You don't want to put yourself 3-2, and then you have to put one over the plate for Durkowski. 2-2, two, two, one out. The pitch fouled off. Good at bat for Kylie Franks. McVeigh again going over to the third baseman Erickson this time, exchanging a little word. The off speed pitch for Dukowski this time just misses, and the count is full. Man, that's it's a good looking pitch from Dukowski. Just good shape to that off speed and. Now three and two, Durkowski many times has had jams like this, but gotta put one over. Probably gonna be a fastball here, could go off speed. Bases loaded, the three, two, swing and a miss! Valamont jumps up, showing some emotion on that one. And two outs here for the Wolverines. Huge out for Durkowski. And that was the right pitch for Durkowski. Three, two, you gotta put it over the zone and just blew a fastball by her. Durkowski looking for her 13th straight shutout inning in the past two games that she's pitched. Here's Kiara Dillon, the first pitch of the at-bat. Popped up foul down the right field line. It's 
defense still playing pretty straight up for the Wolverines. Janisa Conway, been pretty much dead center for the whole game. Throw one to Dylan. Squares up and takes, but a strike. I mean, that's a really interesting decision to square up there. You've got two out, bases loaded. You can go home for the force. You can just get the force at first and end it. Really interesting decision to see Dylan's hand go up the bat there. Definitely not pulling back to swing two. She was pulling back, thinking it was a ball. The 0-2 now. Swing and a miss. Durkowski strikes out the side. <laughs> I mean, that's as good as it gets. Load the bases and... Nothing else in play, three straight strikeouts. That's just, that's a master class again. Lauren Durkowski. And the Wolverines are feeling it now, heading into the bottom of the sixth. Durkowski, stranding bases loaded in the sixth. Stranding a runner on third in the fifth. Stranding first and second in the fourth and first and second in the third. Such clutch pitching for Durkowski. And the Wolverines, middle of the order is coming up now. Kiki Thole, Lily Valamont, Janisa Conway coming up in the bottom of the sixth. That's just a really good couple at bats by Durkowski. When she needed to get three out, she barreled down and struck out three in a row. Maddie Alish is back in the circle for the Boilermakers. She's thrown four innings today, her first 3.2 at the start of this game, and her last point one Got at the end GM. of the inning in the sixth. Stranded three last Excuse time. Excuse me, the fifth, yeah. But it is interesting, obviously, in softball, you're able to go back to a pitcher you already threw in the same game, but you don't see it a whole ton, and the Boilermakers went away from Alish, and go back to her in a jam, and she retired Maddie Erickson to strand three. Kiki Thole stepping up to the plate now. Fly out to left in the first, ground out to third in the, in the third, and a warning track fly out to left field in the fifth. First pitch of the at bat off speed in there for a strike. Again, these Boilermaker pitchers love these off-speed pitches to the power hitters early in at-bats. Kiki Thole, a 290 hitter last year, just sitting under 200 now. That ball's launched! Deep left field! Polar can only watch it and it's gone! See ya! Kiki Thole, second home run of the season. That might be the dagger, if there hasn't been one already. Whether it's the dagger or not, that's a really good sight for Michigan. Kiki Thole, that's your senior, that's your captain, and that's a hitter we know has a lot of pop in her bat, and finally able to sort of make this, maybe this can be the start of her heating up as Big Ten play gets underway. The celebration's going on in the Wolverine dugout. They're loving this Big Ten opener. What's not to love about seven zip? Lily Valmont also two for two today. Two doubles in the third and fifth after walking in the second inning. Takes ball one there from Alish. Here's the 1-0. That's down for ball two. Valamont, another hot hitter for the Wolverine lineup. Janisa Conway on deck, 0 for 3 today, but has shown what she can do. Here's the 2-0 to Valamont. Thought about it, but takes ball three. The Purdue defense pretty straight up. Valamont, the 3-0, takes a strike. Pretty clear red light for her there. 
Looks over at Bonnie Thole over at third base. Seeing if she'd give her any calls for this three run pitch. Alish checking her wristband. Seeing the call, rocks and delivers. The three one grounded, tough play for the third baseman. Scarmardo, but makes the throw over to Meeks at first. And retires Lily Valamont. Nicely done by Scarmardo there, moving sort of toward her shortstop Jones and cut it off in front of her and then Scarmardo sort of moving toward the first base bag versus Jones would have been going the other direction for that throw and nicely done by the Purdue third baseman. Brings up the freshman, Janisa Conway, the second of four freshmen in a row in this Wolverine lineup. One out, nobody on. Already one run in this inning. Thanks to Kiki Thole as Janisa Conway takes strike one on the off-speed pitch from Alish. We saw this earlier during Alish's inning, starting off hitters with an off-speed in the zone for a called strike, and it worked that time. They really do love those off-speed pitches against power hitters. Said that many times, but that is what's going on. And there it is again. Conway way out in front on that 0-1 pitch from Alish, making it 0-2. It's a big cut there from Conway. Still fairly back in the batter's box for facing those off-speed pitches. Let's see what Alish goes here. Might have been an off-speed again. Not that off-speed, but fouled off by Conway. Definitely not a fastball on that 0-2, but definitely not as slow as the previous two pitchers, pitches that Conway received. No radar gun out on the scoreboard out here at Alumni Field. It's the next 0-2. There's that slow off-speed grounded to the right side. Meeks lets Campbell field it and throws her out at first. Michigan thinking she was safe. Campbell taking a little more time than necessary. And for now, Conway is going to stay over at first base. Looking at the replay on the Jumbotron in right field, she looks safe to oh, me. Oh, she is safe. Boy, it's close, but it looks like she was safe. But you kind of hinted at it. Campbell was just a little bit too chill, with a little too relaxed on that play. Didn't really charge the ball and was sort of took a couple seconds on the exchange. Yeah, that ball was between the first baseman Meeks and the second baseman Campbell. Meeks and Campbell, I think, looked at each other before Campbell received that ball. So Meeks get, could get back to first as she was the one not making the play. And maybe that's why Campbell took more time than necessary. She was just waiting for Meeks to get back over there. But it looked like Meeks was on first base with plenty of time and just a slow play by the second baseman Campbell. And kudos to Janisa Conway for hustling down the line on a play that should have been a routine ground out to second. You make it interesting, and you might have just earned yourself a hit for it. You got to love a hard 60. The umpire is looking at the headset right now, thanks to our replay friends right next door in the press box. Yeah, Faith Canfield, Michigan's first base coach, immediately gave the safe sign as Conway stepped on the bag, but... Got a different sign from the home plate umpire, Trina Comerford, but we'll see where this ends with this review. I think now Conway and Canfield are looking down the first base line to see if that blast she hit earlier was fair or not. They were kind of <laughs> angling their arms. She was called a foul, and that was a moonshot by Conway. But the umpire's still looking at this one. Another replay has not been shown for us and the fans here at Carroll Hutchins Stadium. I mean, Michigan's up 7-0 in the bottom of the sixth inning. So this isn't the most consequential decision either way, most likely, barring an unreal Purdue comeback in the top of the seventh. But you, of course, want them, want them to get it right. Michigan in game one of three in this Big Ten opening series against the Boilermakers. Game one was supposed to be yesterday, but there was a bit of a snow out. That game moved to Monday at 4 p.m. 
Game two still tomorrow at noon. And after that, they'll go on to face Toledo early next week. And after that, they travel down to Bloomington, and I'll be I'll be on the road with um, our fellow WCN member and friend Owen Klein. So I'm looking forward to that. That should be a that should be fun. Purdue's upcoming schedule. Rutgers next weekend. Iowa the weekend after that. Indiana early in a couple weeks. Indiana's a really good squad. Lost a little bit from last year's squad with Taron Kern, who was, was a freshman, the player of the year in the Big Ten, transferred to Stanford to go return home to California. So a bit of a loss there for the Hoosiers, but still a really good squad. And Michigan also has to travel to Evanston a few weeks for play the Northwestern, who was first a year ago in the Big Ten. So a bit of a tough schedule coming up for this Wolverines team, but to test, see where this team stands this year. And I do think this is an improved team from last year. These freshmen have really been, whoa, oh, and on the review, stands. they call her out. I think from the replay, it was as an unbiased person, I think from the replay it was pretty clear Conway was safe. But nevertheless, that replay did take a very long time. Looks like the umpires must have just come to a conclusion that there was not enough evidence to over overturn the call. Hmm, that's an interesting one. But nevertheless, it's still 7-0 here, Wolverines in Ann Arbor. Off-speed pitch to Ellis Stevenson is in there for a strike. I don't know, one of the most commonplace misconceptions with baseball softball is Ty does not, in fact, go to the runner. <laughs> and that one was darn close on that throw from second. But, yeah, instead, two outs. Let's see if Ellis Stevenson can ignite something here. The 0-1 to Stevenson. Ground ball, hard hit to third base. Easy play for Scarmardo. And she throws out Ellis Stevenson at first to end the inning as we go into the top of the seventh. Durkowski looking for a second straight shutout. Let's see if she's still out there. Oh, she'll be out. She'll be out there. Durkowski already thrown 117 pitches today through six innings. Looks like Riley Karkaburo is going to be replacing Kiki Thole at first base defensively. If you're just joining us, Ellie Sealer, definitely the star of today's game. A home run in the first inning. Putting the Wolverines up one. A home run in the third inning. Followed by back-to-back -back doubles by Lily Valamont and Maddie Erickson. Making it a 3-0 game. Doubles from Castalis and McVeigh in the fifth. And a hit-by-pitch with the bases loaded for Avery Fantucci, making this a 6-0 game. And then in the sixth, Kiki Thole hitting her second homer of the season to deep left field making this the 7-0 we have now, heading into the top of the seventh. It's been a complete performance for Michigan. Drakowski's had a couple of jams, but obviously the zero on the Purdue scoreboard tells you that she's gotten out of those, and Michigan's had a couple of nice defensive plays, but the bats have really come alive. 11 hits, you've played it seven runs. You've also stranded a good chunk of runners, but overall you've done a really nice job getting runners into scoring position, and seven across tells the story that You've been able to put them across. And that's with three solo homers mixed in. Top of the order for the Boilermakers. Mariah Poehler, the slap hitter, takes ball one outside from Durkowski. That was her 118th pitch on this cold Saturday afternoon. Still 37 degrees here in Ann Arbor. Durkowski rocks the 1-0. Slap down the third baseline, just foul over the head of Maddie Erickson at third base. Would have been interesting if that stayed fair because with Erickson playing in where she was, that might have might bounced on over the chop head, yeah. right over her head if it had been fair. 1-1 one, one now to Polar. Hitting 330 on the season, but 0 for 2 today. The lefty. Durkowski's pitch. Squares up and takes. Just down. 2-1. Mariah Poehler 
Leading the Boilermakers in stolen bases. Always a threat if she gets on base. 2-1 now is slammed into right field. It's an easy base hit. Doesn't round first. And she's clapping on first base, liking what she just did there. Looking how she was going to go with an oppo approach with those first couple slap hits. But then pulls that 2-1 pitch into right field for an easy single. Yeah, that was ripped into right field. No, you said it. As a slap hitter, she's typically going opposite field, but got out in front of that one and buried it into right field. Here's Chloe Banks, the second of these five lethal hitters in the Boilermaker order. The sophomore, 0 for 1 today, still hitting 358 on the season and 387 with runners on base. Durkowski's 1-0. Just outside, 2-0, and Valamont will walk out to the circle now to talk to Durkowski. Mariah Poehler on first base, nobody out. Durkowski can obviously, Michigan out 7-0, they won't bat in the bottom of the seven. She can end it right here by getting three outs, and you do have the runner on first pull with a lot of speed, 16 stolen bags. I don't think you'd, if you're Purdue, you want to risk an out when you need seven, but she can move if there's a ball in play. Here's the 2-0 from Durkowski also outside. 3-0 to Chloe Banks. Would be very surprised if she's swinging here. Kohler just providing only the third hit for the Boilermakers. And this one, Durkowski's pitch just high, ball four. Walks Banks on four pitches. Bringing up Olivia Meeks. Pinch hitter now for the Boilermakers. Kendall Bailey instead of Olivia Meeks. Bailey, excuse me. Yeah, Bailey, junior outfielder, Birmingham, Alabama. Hitting 230 this year. And she'll get the call instead of Meeks, who's 0 for 3 with three strikeouts so far in this one. So hasn't exactly been Meeks' day. And Purdue will look for a different hitter here with I mean, two outs, excuse me, no outs, two aboard. And they'll try to build something here. They need seven in the top of the seventh inning to keep this game alive. Yeah, as you said, not her day, but she's still one of the top hitters for the Boilermakers, as it looks like. Aaron Haynes, and that'll be Dirk's day. She has thrown 125 pitches. But how cool it would have been for her to throw back-to-back -back shutouts for the Wolverines. Would have been fun. I, I'd imagine we'll see Drakowski tomorrow or Monday with another start, and Hain might as well, but the freshman will get a chance to close this one out. Either way, it's another really good start by Lauren Drakowski. Aaron Hayne warming up. Michigan infielders and outfielders trying to stay warm on this 37 degree day. Aaron Hayne from Posseville, Indiana. About a three hour and 27 minute drive south of West Lafayette where Purdue is located. What an exact figure. <laughs> there might be traffic right now on this Saturday evening. I could make it three hours. <laughs> Kendall Bailey takes the 01. The 01 pitch. Excuse me. And she fouls that off. 
to left field. Kendall Bailey, the junior pinch hitter from Birmingham, Alabama. Hitting from the left side, first and second now. Mariah Poehler on second. The 0-2 swing and a miss. Three pitch strikeout for Aaron Hain. It's a really good pitch there. 0-2, high fastball and Bailey couldn't catch up to it. Looks like Aaron Hain is trying to rush the catcher Lily Valamont as she's in a groove. Quick pitch is this 0-0. That's strike one. She's definitely in a groove. Mariah Poehler on second base. Chloe Banks on first. Purdue putting runners on base for the, <laughs> for the fourth straight inning as it looked like Sage Scarmardo swung at that pitch not almost before Aaron Hain threw it. It was comically early and that was not that slow of a pitch there. The 0-2 popped up. Easy play for Aaron Hain at the pitcher's mound. Two away. And this could be the last batter of the game. For the Boilermakers, it's Ashlyn Campbell. Nice job by Hain there to help herself out, trot a couple steps out of the circle, make the catch, and now she's one away, as you said. Another quick pitch for Hain. This one's just outside to Campbell. The freshman holding the keystone down today. This ball, great play by Maddie Erickson at third base and the throw to first and that'll do it. 7-0 win for the Wolverines. That's a nice play there by Erickson. Throw from the knees off the dive and we've talked about her arm strength quite a bit as all the juice to get that one from her knees and this is a really complete win for Michigan. 7-0, the bats were alive. Excellent outing from Dirk, good close from Hain. Just a really good all-around performance for Michigan. Yeah, the Wolverines and Bonnie Thole can't ask for anything else in the Big Ten opener for Ann Arbor. The handshake lines commence as Michigan will be taking on Purdue tomorrow at 1 p.m. Who do you think we'll see in the circle tomorrow? I'd imagine Hain gets a start and it'll be Durkowski again on Monday. And we'll see how much of Jessica LeBeau gets mixed in this weekend and see how she throws. But it's a really good staff for Michigan that with those three. But I'd imagine it'll be Hain and if LeBeau's good to go, she'll be out of the pen and Durkowski the next day. But Great game the for the Wolverines as the team singing the fight song to the Michigan faithful here in Ann Arbor. Carol Hushins Field. Durkowski moving her record to eight and five on the year. And the Wolverines have to be feeling pretty good going into game two tomorrow. Ellie Sealer definitely the highlight of this game. Solo shots in the first and third inning to highlight her three for three day. Two RBIs for her. Two hits from Valamont, one from Thole, one from Casales, one from McVeigh, and another from Erickson to total those 11 hits for the Wolverines. Alex, any final thoughts? No, this is a fun one. It was a pleasure calling this game with you, Emmett. Um, we've got a good crew on this one tomorrow. We will hopefully have a crew on the Monday afternoon game as well. And it's a good win for this Michigan softball team that all of a sudden finds themselves pretty hot. Seven of their last nine are wins. And Good time to be feeling it heading into Big Ten play. Yeah, my name is Emmett Gerstein, joined by Alice Miller. Thank you for joining us today on WCBN Sports, and we'll see you tomorrow at 1 p.m. Thank you.